How can I, I do want to? He did I say get like minute something you something and then I don't. Like, come on. Well, I, you you wanted to fact check on on whether or I not did, like Donald but... Trump was like it says right here. Donald Trump and his administration have embraced nearly two thirds of the policy recommendations from the Heritage Foundation mandate for leadership. And if you can continue, it says with approximately 70 former heritage employees working for the Trump transition team as a, or as a part of the administration, the policy recommendations have served as guidelines for reducing the size of scope in federal government. Where are we getting this from? I mean, I'm, I'm asking. Oh, this is from the heritage.org foundation. This it's is literally the heritage from the website. Foundation touting themselves as being in the ear of the president. Yet, can you find me a source that says Donald Trump himself endorsed in the Heritage Foundation? <laughs> you don't need one. You, you don't do need, need See, this is the thing. No, now, hold on, Mod. For the, Mod, I, let, Mod, let, you've let, been let, going. Let her, let her I've got to respond at some point. Anyone can yeah. say Anyone Maude, can... I've got to respond at some point. This is getting silly. Please, let's Low, let her let her let her finish RTP and then you go. My like, God. give her give how her, many give points her, are we rolling time through to here first? Yeah, I mean, you have made a lot of points. I haven't. I have had a hard. And you time. haven't addressed one of them. I am addressing them, and like I said, like I know this is no. A you're deflecting to Biden. You didn't I'm address deflecting. a single one of my gonna... points. It's going to be really difficult to get out a point. Like I'm giving you all of the respect for you to to finish something, but it's going to be very difficult for me to get out a point if I constantly keep getting interrupted. Okay, like, so all right, so we, let's let's skip the fascism for now, and yeah. then uh, let's go to the next point. So the next point, I'm, I'm going to throw this first one at you, uh, RTP. So um, they say that corporate power is protected. That's one of the uh, uh, the tenets of fascism. However, we can look at you know, um, kitchen table talk right now that it's, it's obviously expensive for American families to, to pay for food, pay for utility bills and everything like that. And, and Biden being part of a party that's against corporate, corporate, like corporatism, why isn't Biden doing anything against corporates, corporations right now to at least limit the power of what they're doing and taking advantage of the American dollar and the taxpayer? Yeah. I, yeah. I don't, I don't think Biden's against corporatism. I think that's one of my uh, core critiques of him is that he's far too moderate and he he takes big corporation money. He does the bidding of, of big corporations. Uh, I don't think Biden's good on this issue. I think Biden sh should do a lot more to help the American people. The, the reality is we have Donald Trump and we have Joe Biden, our two options, and neither one of them is going to do anything to fundamentally change the corporations just as sucking all the wealth out of the working class. That's the truth. Neither one of them are good on this. Okay. And then I, for you, for you, Maude, with the same question, but directed with your party and MAGA being in favor of corporations and letting corporations run amok, basically, in the United States, what is Trump going to do to actually put more money into our pockets? What is he going to do against corporations? What, like, is there something that we're not seeing? I, I don't know that Trump actually has ever stated that he wouldn't do anything for the American people. I mean, look at the, the legislation that he pushed while he was president. I think right now, and then again, um, to kind of, again, to kind of try to contribute, again, Trump to the, um, to saying that he's not going to do anything for the American people, look at the TCJ Act, TCJA, um, that was instituted 2017, I believe it was. And... Um, you can go on irs.gov and you can see that uh, corporate, even though corporations had a permanent tax break, these tax breaks don't go anywhere. They don't decrease and they don't they they don't go down. And of course, when it sunsets in 2025, Congress it's Congress's job to rewrite the tax code, just like Donald Trump said in the beginning. Uh, the Senate and the in the House have the duty to rewrite the tax code. If they don't like how it's working or if it's not working for all the American people, if it's just putting money in the pockets of the corporations, both the Democrats and the Republicans have been guilty of that. Is it Donald Trump's job exclusively to deal with uh, the issues as far as the economy and tax? No, it takes, a, and just like Joe Biden said, it takes a consensus. So with TCJA, you can go on irs.gov and look at it. Six to 9% uh, tax cuts for people making over 500,000 and above. That's all they had, that, and that's it. Now, as far as the middle class was concerned, where we see tax cuts that were much, much less,
before he was president under TCJA, and it's still continuing. I think the report came out in 2023. Uh, there might be a new report coming out. I think the old one came out in February of 2023. We saw tax cuts for the middle class between 18 to 20 percent. And I was surmised with the way the economy is going now, um, the only reason why people are actually to, uh, staying afloat is because of TCJA. Because otherwise, I, and I, I think we're pretty much headed there, we'd be headed towards a recession. So as far as putting money in the in the taxpayers' pockets, I think Donald Trump has shown a track record of being able to do that. Do that. He brought jobs back to America. He, he got manufacturing jobs back to America. He cut out China. He cut out making sure that uh, making sure that other companies were not profiting off of our oil drilling. He made sure that we kept it in-house. Drill, baby, drill. Trump has stated this as consistently over, over, over and over again, and he's come up with a comprehensive plan. And you can see it on Agenda 47. I won't take up too much of the time on that. But uh, on his on his plan is is to make American jobs stay here in the United States and we don't outsource our jobs. The fundamental thing that people are worried about today that Joe Biden is not worried about is not lining the pockets of like, you know, big corporations, but actually taking care of the American people. Biden has not come out with a comprehensive plan whatsoever. As a matter of fact, we can't even get him to stick around long enough after a. a okay, um, so my, my, that's what we talked. That's what I talked to RTP about was Biden. But my question would be like towards Trump, like. We're not seeing any evidence of Trump doing anything but favoring corporations, especially with the TCJA. I don't find that to be true. I don't find that to be true. Like well, we I said, see. he kept it. I, I explained this already. He kept the corporate tax rate uh, where it is. It doesn't go up or down for these businesses. It doesn't. If for the, the these bigger corporations, they're not getting te- more tax cuts than the the American people are. And of course, obviously, they're going to make more money, right? I, obviously, at more than the average person. But when it comes to co- like sort of comparing people to corporations, it, whatever the corporations are do may have an effect on us. But ultimately, the middle class America are the ones, the people that are most worried about their kitchen table issues. Trump has come out with a comprehensive plan, a comprehensive plan, and what I'm saying is, is that it's contrary to Biden. He hasn't done any of that. Okay, um, so I'd love to respond um, to that. Uh, yeah, you, you can, can I respond? Give a yeah, Number give like one. a forty-five For, second when it comes to then... later. Go ahead. Yeah. Number one, Trump was a net job loser in manufacturing. He lost jobs. Drill, baby, drill. You can brag about that all you want. We're drilling more under Biden. Biden has Biden has negotiated on the behalf of the American people to lower the price of oil. Donald Trump once negotiated against the American people with OPEC to raise the price of oil. One of them has spent the entire presidency trying to get oil lower. One of them moved it up. Now, you said you want to make jobs stay in America. Donald Donald Trump lost jobs as president in America. He lost jobs. He talked, he campaigned, if you remember, on infrastructure. He said, I'm going to fix the airports, the bridges, the highways. He didn't do anything. Joe Biden got it done. Joe Biden brought millions of jobs back to America. He's, he now has, went through the CHIPS Act, we have manufacturing and next generation manufacturing, something that will keep our country going for years to come. His plan is so good, Republicans across the country are standing up in front of their, their, uh, their constituents saying, look at all this money I brought in. Look what I did. That's Joe, that's Joe Biden. To, you asked Maude what Donald Trump do, did to protect us against corporations, and I want to make sure that we know that Maude's answer was he gave them a tax cut, but not quite as big as the middle class. If you want to talk about the middle class, they're bleeding. The greatest transfer of wealth in the history of our country happened during COVID as corporations, because of our structure, were able to take the money, and they're reinvesting that money now into going around America and buying up all the housing. And now they want our houses, too. They they want our net worth. Corporations are coming for you, middle America. And Joe Biden's not great, but he's a hell of a lot better than Donald Trump, who I just saw today in, uh, at a secret meeting telling those same billionaires, great news, guys. I'm going to cut your taxes again. All right. So. Meeting. Again. What's that? How did you see him at a secret meeting? It's, it's the uh, 47 Club. Somebody recorded it. One thing Trump hasn't learned at this okay, point is when people come to the door, he should have them check their cell phones because he keeps getting is recorded there, saying Is there a way shit. I can look this up, RTP? Yeah, you can look it up. Look up Club 47. Trump promises to cut taxes 
uh, to his rich donor, something like that. You'll find it, no oh, problem. 47. That's crazy that you haven't seen that. That's why. No, I, I, I don't go fishing on fishing expeditions about you know Trump conspiracies, but you spent um, you I, spent all day talking about Fani Willis's ethics. I don't want to hear about okay, fishing okay, conspiracies. Hold on. We can't, I'm talking we about can't the president of the we United States. About. I mean, we, we were can't. actually following the case. I hope you did. Yeah. All right, Super so so the next topic, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna move to the next topic. Uh, this was a topic of expertise for Mod. Um, I think you would. I think you could take it from here when I say, uh, what is a um, Crossfire Hurricane? <laughs> All right, so uh, Crossfire Hurricane. Uh, it was an open and active investigation that actually started in 2016, July 31st, 2016, when uh, it was uh, first reported by Five Eyes. So. Uh, so to just put this succinctly, because you have to go step by step. At, at, at the time, CIA was involved in uh, the overseas operations. Uh, the state uh, station chief of London, her name was Gina Haspel. She went on to eventually become CIA director under Trump's administration. Um, Gina Haspel would have been in charge of coordinating with MI6 and other intelligence agencies. And uh, essentially, the information that they gathered uh, during that time frame, they gave it over to the FBI and to the assistant director, Bill, Bill Priestap, who would have been in charge of the investigation along with the assistant uh, director for counterintelligence, who was Peter Strzok at the time. So uh, Gina Haspel being in charge of the chief of station, the information that, that was gathered from the Steele reports done by Christopher Steele and Igor Danchenko was sent over to CIA. CIA then gave it over to um, uh, the FBI, which essentially they opened up an investigation. And the beginning of it actually starts with George Papadopoulos and an Australian businessman seemingly getting some sort of information that would connect Donald Trump to Russia and trying to get information on Hillary Clinton. However, we do understand from the Durham report that it was wrought, uh, that whole investigation should have been opened in the first place. As a matter of fact, uh, he goes on to describe the, the Steele dossier is wrought with just flat out lies. And so as far as Crossfire Hurricane is concerned, uh, that investigation as it started, moved on to the Mueller investigation where uh, special counsel Robert Mueller investigated it, found out uh, all of these things about the Steele dossier, the, all the lying and things like that. And then we sort of fast forward where it ends as far as the Durham report is concerned. So I don't know if you, how far you want me to go with that. So. Uh, RTP, would you like her to explain further or would you, um, are you okay with what she got? No, I mean, she, yeah, she pretty much uh, laid, I mean, uh, look, she's picking and choosing the details that uh, make her case. Everything she said is right, but there's, there's a lot of context left out there. And she's relying heavily on Durham, who is just one of the oh, people God. who reviewed this case and wrote a report about it. There's also a Horowitz report, but you'll never hear that on conservative. Yeah, I did, I, I uh, you'll never hear that from Michael conservatives Horowitz. because it doesn't really yeah. work for them. There's two reports. And, and they report, actually, uh, he wrote it back in December of yeah. And what is the Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty well versed with that as well. You said, right, I didn't say you didn't know about it. I said we don't talk about that. But yeah, here's what Durham concluded. It. This is all that really here's here's all that really matters. Durham concluded that uh, there should be no real like he didn't advocate for any changes. He said that what the FBI did is that they they did not keep their uh, their policy of like strict rule keeping and, and it is absolutely true that what happened uh, in Crossfire Hurricane, that there were a lot of liberties taken. N no question about that. There was bias. There was Democrat bias included in Crossfire Hurricane. Anybody who tells you Peter Strzok wasn't biased is lying to you. But the, the Durham knew this, and Durham is telling us this. And what he concluded is that he brought three indictments. Two were dropped because there was, there was nothing there. And the other one, a guy pled guilty to altering an email. And Republicans have been feasting on this since it came out, despite the fact that Durham's conclusion itself was, I'm not sure, there's basically no crimes here. I don't think it should have been at, in, it opened up. Horowitz disagrees. Obviously, there's disagreement on this subject, but he proved nothing. He proved that one person took an email and altered it, and that's it. Like conservatives are love this; they think that it proves something. Well, Durham disagrees with you, so I don't know where that I, conclusion I'm gonna, comes. I'm going to hit back on something you said um, ex exactly on page seven of the Durham report. Uh, it says right here. 
uh, right below page six, page six, the Justice Department foundational norms include the principal exercise of discretion, independence from improper influence, treating like cases alike, and unwavering commitment to following the facts and the law, reaffirming where necessary, strengthening the Justice Department's policies that are foundational to the rule of law, many of which were initially adopted in the aftermath of Watergate, essential to this effort. In the aftermath of the Crossfire Hurricane, in the FISA surveillances of PAGE, the department has adopted other important policies. We discuss them and possible additional changes and portions of the, for, the report uh, follow. So the first few pages of the document actually do outline the executive summary and all of that. But then uh, about through uh, pages 100 through 317, they actually do give outlines about what those changes are. And if you actually look at Horowitz's report, they are essentially the same thing. So I would challenge that Horowitz actually got the changes recommended in the Durham report as the foundational basis of his report. So I can actually show you the comparisons if you'd like, because he actually, mm -hmm. even though it doesn't wholesale the changes in the guidelines, because that would be up to the DOJ and the FBI to actually make some fundamental changes, but to make this comparison to say that Horowitz, or I'm sorry, the Durham report doesn't actually can say any changes should take in, should take place, that is unequivocally false. I was surmising. Well, I didn't say that. You did. Horowitz no, actually. No, can I tell? Can I tell you what I said? Or is it, I'm not allowed to. He okay. didn't say. Maude, it. He can didn't I just say tell that, you what I said? It's not what I said. He, Maude, no, no, Mod. Let me just restate what I said. Just let me let restate him, it, let, and I'll give you the. I'll give you the time back. Just let, let me restate, re restate what I time. said. He did say that. What I said is he implemented no real policy changes. He advocated for some changes, but didn't implement any. Two people, he, three people got charged, two were dropped, and one was one it, pled it guilty job, to Arthur. altering an email. I it said was, all that stuff. It's not his job. Who's Michael Horowitz then? What does Michael Horowitz do? Yeah, they why both would, had both would, Michael Horowitz. Both Mike. Can I answer the question? Yeah. Don't ask me questions if I can't answer. Michael Horowitz and Durham both had the authority to prosecute any crime, not only in the scope of their investigation, but any crime that came up while they were doing their investigation. Both of them had prosecu prosecutorial powers. They both did. You, what Do you think they just didn't do it? Like, you guys all know better than them. There, there were all these crimes, but Horowitz and Durham were like, yeah, I'm, I did all this reporting. I'm just going to phone it in. No crimes. Yeah, but to say that he made, it wasn't his job to make changes. His job was to investigate. I don't think in his purview, and if you actually look at the, the top, he tells you in what scope and what direction that he was supposed to go, and he did just that. You're essentially telling me, so uh, again, we'll, we'll go back to the top I like here. like that's what I just said. No, actually you didn't. You're ascribing the fact that he made no real changes when that was not in his purview. Uh, I didn't say it was, Mod. I never kinda, said it was. You kind of did. No, I'm did. telling you right now I didn't. You, That's you not did. what I said. You, can, you no, said No, I, I said he didn't. <laughs> no, I said kinda, he, he Kind of did doesn't mean he changes. did, though, Mod. to be fair. If I he used the word advocate, what does advocate mean? He he, he petitioned them he said you should change some of these changes. rules. He did advocate. I said that. I said that. That's what he said. Am I in the twilight zone here? He said that he he did not advocate for any real change. And I'm telling you that he did. And I'm I reading to you that. out of the report. You absolutely said that. I didn't. I said he advocated for changes, but he instilled no real changes. And he advocated for policy again, changes. My, my follow up to that was that was not in his purview to do that. It's up to the inspector. OK, I so you did that. I say wrong then? I'm just telling you that I didn't say it was in his purview to change them. I'm saying I, nothing I came that. from them. I don't know if you understand that. That's what I, I'm, I'm simply pointing okay, well, out. We're on the same page. That it would not be in his purview to do any of those changes. As a matter it of sounds... fact, he goes on to recommend a list of changes that Michael Horowitz himself actually used. So you said that you did not want to talk about Michael Horowitz. I would love to talk about Michael Horowitz and the report that he did before the U.S. Senate committee. Fine, but what what crimes did Michael Horowitz uncover or charge people for? Michael Horowitz was not the special counsel; he was the inspector general, and so it would okay, be so in who was, purview to make. He so would who was charged? Hold on, he would recommend changes, or excuse me, changes for the FBI and the DOJ, which he did essentially that. Now, may, did he did he lambast the Trump administration in the Durham report over and over again? He absolutely did, but that that take away from any of the validity of the report itself? Absolutely not. 
I, I don't find that. I think it's a, a subjective, uh, maybe based on bias, that you're attributing the Durham report to being, you know, uh, not a good report or being kind of one side. I didn't say that. You did. It's you a very did. good report. You did. No, I said it to, he did a great job. Did, hold on. You did say that it was one-sided as far as coming after the Democrats, which I would love for you to point out to me in the report. I never said that. Whoa, I never said that. I never even brought that up. That was never said by me. Are you I talking about a, Are you talking about previously he said that? He didn't yes. say that. Oh, pre, he, he, she's saying you said it previously in a different live with her. No, no, no. In this live, you just no. said. No, I didn't well, say he that. He never said I anything didn't say about that. the Democrats. He did. He absolutely said that it was against the Democrats. Oh, I, don't, no, I, I didn't hear him Are say. I didn't. I, I didn't hear him say that. He did say that. Like I'm not. Nobody I am not making things up here, and I, I'm like this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know I what to tell you. you. Said Look that. At I didn't I say did, that, Jesse. No, I didn't. What? Like, why are we? I, making sw I swear, I swear, I didn't hear him say that. I swear, I put, I like, I, I didn't hear him say it. That is, it's absolutely recorded, and I'm pretty sure that somebody has the recording. You absolutely said yeah. that it was one sided and it was seemingly against the Democrats. You absolutely. <laughs> I never said that. That's crazy. I never said that. I never said it. It's not even how I talk. Nobody would ever hear me talk. Like, I don't even talk like that. That's oh silly. No, no, I think I think Durham actually did a good job. And I think Durham did important work. And Durham exposed, uh, in fact, no, in fact, what I did say, if we're being specific, I said nobody could possibly look at Peter Strzok and say that he wasn't biased. Who's Peter Strzok? A Democrat against Trump. I, I, I only pointed, yes, I actually he, only pointed said. out, no, but he did I only say pointed Democrat. out the bias you from Democrats. Democrats. You said... <laughs> You yeah, I was pointing out their bias. Think he was, I don't think he said about the Democrats. I'm pretty sure I, I would have heard that because, like, he's like he obviously he's a Democrat. You no, you said I, that I, the listen, Durham report. There were, were part. No, let me just report, make my point. You did say that the Durham report was uh, in in some way, shape, or form biased against the Democrats. You no, made. I said there was. You no, said Ma, that. Ma, Ma, you didn't listen. Mod, I, I said, Mod, then, I, Mod, I, hold on, let me, guys, can, Mod, can I, for the love of God, let me like just give you my statement again. I mean, like, are we, are <laughs> I, I, Mod, yeah, that's no. not fair. That's it not fair. It's not fair I, to I, me that you're sitting here saying that he didn't say that. I didn't hear him say it. I, I and nobody in the chat heard him say it either. Of but course, he did say like that it was a good report. That are on his side, and the people saying that he did say it are not listening to me. Mod, let me let me get it out then. Here's what I said, and just remember if you if Make you remember if you then. Mod, please, this you cannot so, you can you can't keep interrupting answer. and then complaining about interrupting. This is silly, Mod. Control yourself. This is crazy. What I said specifically, and I did it as a fucking olive branch. I said when you look at the Durham report, what you no no Democrat can say that it wasn't biased. And I'm talking about the bias from, say, and I brought up specifically Peter Strzok. <laughs> I said Peter Strzok was obviously biased. Obviously he was biased. And I said that there were people in the FBI who were biased, who did things they shouldn't have. But at the end of the day, the only they brought three charges, two were dropped, and one admitted to altering an email. I'm My only conclusion to the Durham report is it's just really not that important. It, he did good work showing our FBI uh, that they need to do a better job and they need to hold their, their agents responsible. And there is some reform that needs to happen at the a uh, FBI. We all, Republican, Democrat, everybody should be thankful for what Durham did because he did expose problems in the FBI. I agree with that. I think he did a good job. I'm simply saying that his conclusion was one person edited an email and that was it. Okay, okay, so let's... what's the importance of um, Crossfire Hurricane um, mod? Like, what what is this exposing exactly? If I was, if it, obviously people do not know about Crossfire Hurricane, what is this potentially, how is this damaging to a Democrat or a Republican or whoever? I, I don't think it was dam damaging specifically to a Democrat or Republican. I think uh, even in the, admittedly, uh, by the use of these confidential human forces, so uh, sources, excuse me, let's talk about uh, Igor Danchenko, number one. 
Igor Danchenko was in the middle of a criminal investigation with him previously lying to the FBI between 2000 and 2000, I'm sorry, 2010 and 2011. The FBI never cleared him again to be a confidential human source until he came up again. And this is in Michael Horowitz's report. This is also in the Durham report. And again, I'm only cross-referencing these two because there are similarities between the two. One of them obviously uh, is, is, it has some, some very, um, I don't want to say huge, uh, I don't want to say they're wrong, but it's obvious that Michael Horowitz had a huge problem with a lot of the things that was said in there. I'm not going to preclude that it's simply against the Democrats or simply against the Republicans. But Igor Danchenko was not a, he, he was not a source that should have been used. He was used uh, uh, in order to give information that was proven to be false. When they traveled to Moscow, he did it with a guy that he already knew. I think his name was Sergey Milian. He claims that he met this guy. He never met Sergey Milian in his entire life, right? So as far as what should we find out from Crossfire Hurricane, we should know this, that uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign was fined $113,000, that they absolutely used the steel dossier, um, that the FBI did not follow the steps provided they also took advantage of the loopholes. They used coercive uh, plea bargaining to get some of these people to actually flip on Trump when they actually didn't even end up flipping on him. They ended up pleading out to things that they were convicted of and actually never were called to testify because there was no case against Trump. We do know that both found that Donald Trump hadn't done a single thing, that he was being spied on by uh whomever, it could have been, they, you could say that it was the Obama administration. I don't find any actual proof that it was the actual Biden admin, or Obama administration that was actually doing it, but it was obvious that there were people within the government that were conspiring to come after Trump. Now, do you want to see it was political? No, because the report explicitly says that it was not politically motivated. But what should we know from it? We do know that certain people use loopholes within the FBI and the CIA to come after a political opponent. And so what it basically highlights is, is that the, the FBI and the DOJ should not and cannot be trusted, and that Donald Trump had every right to have this investigated, and he had every right to question on whether or not there were people still in the government conspiring against him. And yeah, you could say it, it sounds conspiratorial, but why would they open up this investigation in the first place? Why even go after Trump in the first place, knowing he didn't do anything wrong? And then the Democrats maintaining that he had done this, even though he was completely exonerated. So the question is, is that what should we know from this? We should know that the Democrats are using a lie to still come after Trump. Why is that? Why continue on using a lie? So we should know he was spied on. The intelligence agencies were used to do that. Donald Trump was absolutely correct, and the Democrats are now trying to use it against him when they know that it was a complete lie. Why have they obfuscated from that? RTP? Yeah, I, th I think you did a really good job changing the subject, but I'll address every one of those points. When you say Donald Trump <laughs> okay, was so completely let's let exonerated, say I everything think... And then, uh, and then we'll let him Yeah, get when it, you okay. say Trump is com completely exonerated, I think uh, you must be referring to when Robert Mueller said, uh, I can neither, uh, I cannot exonerate Donald Trump. In fact, the, the power to prosecute doesn't seem to lie with me. It seems to lie with Congress. But he specifically said, I cannot exonerate Trump. You and every other MAGA Republican misuses the word exonerated all the fucking time. Exonerated means proved that like it, you, it didn't happen. Not that you weren't found guilty. There's a difference. Not guilty and exonerated are not the same thing. You said Trump had every right to investigate this. I agree with you he did you know who else agrees with you joe biden who could have killed this investigation if he wanted to but he didn't and we also saw that under the biden administration and if you watch the during hearings you'll know durham under attorney general Barr, was taking almost weekly meetings with attorney Barr. they were caught they were talking consistently Barr, who had the ear of the president and durham who was doing the investigation when uh, merrick garland took over he said i'll be hands off Joe Biden said, I'll be hands off. Do your own thing. He didn't even communicate with uh, what he was doing with Merrick Garland until he sent the letter. This letter, this Durham report is a letter to Merrick Garland telling him, here's what I did. So Joe Biden and the Democrats who obviously were causing problems, we just let this keep going. We're like, yeah, investigate it. 
you said certain people use loopholes to go after political opponents. I agree with you. I agree that that happened in Crossfire Hurricane. I agree that uh, there were Democrats who didn't like Donald Trump, like Peter Strzok, who went after him. I would also just simply point out that we're currently having the world's dumbest impeachment investigation where zero dollars and zero cents have been tied to Joe Biden. And, and I would say certain people are using loopholes to go after political opponents there too. It does happen, but I agree with you there. You, you said they use this investigation to investigate Trump. Well, if you read the charging documents if you read what what Mueller was charged to do he was to investigate any and all connections between the Trump campaign and Russia this was not an investigation into Trump it was an investigation into anybody in his circle that was working with Russia and they got 34 indictments and some of them including uh, national security advisor Michael Flynn and campaign manager Paul Manafort pled guilty to loot to lying to the FBI which brings us to our friend friend Igor Donchenko. You and Democrats love to bring up the fact that Igor was this bad, like this bad FBI informant and that he lied. What you never tell anybody is that in 2022, he was acquitted of lying to the FBI. He went to court. He was charged with lying to the FBI and he was acquitted. But here we go again with the with the Republicans. We're going to show up every day and use Igor Danchenko, who's been He's acquitted. That's why Hillary Clinton. Last point. This is the last one. You said Hillary Clinton was charged 130K uh, for the Steele dossier. No, she was charged 130K for misusing campaign funds. The fact that it was the Steele dossier doesn't fucking matter. And you said it was about the Steele dossier, but the truth is it was misusing campaign funds. By the way, you know who else misused campaign funds for $130,000? Donald Trump, when he tried to pay off Stormy Daniels using campaign funds that his attorney has pled guilty to. So all around, www. That's All not right, true. Mom. What she just said. He absolutely. She used. <laughs> and if you actually read it, she was. She paid. A, she was fined a hundred. The DNC and she was fined one hundred thirteen thousand dollars for yes, misusing campaign funds. But what did they do? They bought the steel dossier to use against Trump. That's what I just said. All right. That's what I said in the beginning. I just said, said that. Correct. Yeah, we agree on that. Yeah, we agree on that. But you said I was wrong. Don't be. Don't be cheeky. No, I said I said you didn't. You, did. you no. Don't what I cheeky. said is we you said, said she was charged one hundred and thirteen thousand dollars because they paid for the steel dossier. Do but all what right. they what they were actually charged with was campaign uh, finance violations. And I think you chose not to say that because you know no. Trumpy boy has some campaign finance violations well, no, of his it, own that wasn't, and, a, and a very similar amount. That wasn't that wasn't the reason why I didn't purposefully leave that out i was for brevity purposes i figured we would talk about it no. either way but that wasn't a purposeful leave out uh she was she was fined one hundred and thirteen thousand dollars for buying the steel dossier and she did it with campaign funds that is a fact okay what she been so, hey she can we can we get funds? some time Just... like we've got two thousand people in here let's get rtp up to three hundred thousand k likes please and show some love to everybody. These people are spending time out of their away from their families to to have a great debate and and be entertaining to you guys. So let's let's get those likes up and let's show some support. All right. Um, and thank you too for coming here today. Thank you. Let me let me remind you that I'm greatly appreciative that you Jesse guys are finally doing this. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. But, Go ahead, um, uh, okay, so let's let's change the subject a bit. We can come back I to that. To Unless you want to go, Ma, do you got some I, one more I thing did. to say? I mean, he just okay, sorry, go ahead. about Igor Danchenko. So yeah, as, as far as Igor Danchenko was concerned, he was offered immunity uh, previous, he was, and that's in, the, that's in the report, he was offered immunity in 2011 and 2001 in exchange for information. He had a penchant for going around just like Paul Manafort did, and I'm not excusing Paul Manafort for what he had done, but in no way, shape, or form, what he had done was in it benefited Trump in any way, shape, or form. We know Paul Manafort was a guy that wanted to go out and buy a bunch of shit all the time, and he would sell classified information is what he was accused of. And essentially, Paul Manafort uh, uh, had his crimes adjudicated, and he was charged for that, right? As far as uh, Igor Danchenko, now in 2016, and this is in the report, the FBI identified him as Steele's primary subsource 
and they agreed to meet with the FBI under the protection of immunity le of, a, of immunity letter. So he was offered an immunity in exchange for his testimony. Now, he lied to the FBI during that. Now, anything outside of an immunity plea, if you claim immunity, if you claim immunity, if you lie outside of that, or if you make false statements in court, you're going to be charged with that. So I don't even see how that correlates to what you said, because even if he was acquitted, because he was acquitted of those charges, he was, from he was charged FBI, and then was acquitted. That does, not, that does not mean that what he had done was was wrong. He was offered immunity in exchange for testimony. And during that testimony, he lied to the FBI. And what they said, no, was, he was acquitted. Hold on. He was acquitted for lying, but he was offered immunity because to the they FBI. Know. Yes, he was offered the protection of immunity. This from was a the jury FBI, trial. But Maude. he lied to the FBI after they had questioned him. You can't lie to the FBI, right? Now, yes, okay. they did. So RTP, you can't interrupt now. But it had absolutely. Well, can I address that do. point? Yeah, it yeah, we'll get to it when she's done. Go ahead, Ma. Finish okay. up. Do it, do it now. Just teasing, just teasing. Him and, him and his attorney met with the investigators at the beginning of the year. He was offered immunity. They knew that he had lied. They knew that he was guilty of these crimes, but they offered him immunity in exchange for testimony. Now, during that exchange, they accused him of lying to the FBI and submitting false information. Eventually, yeah they acquitted him for that lie but that does not change the fact yes i i'm saying that that doesn't change the fact that igor danchenko was offered immunity because he knew they knew that he had done something wrong wait what am I doing wrong here? so wait so the argument is he was accused of lying to the fbi they after took him to was, court after the charge the given yes immunity. after after all that after yeah after all that immunity, they took him to court to the FBI. they took him to court they charged him with lying to the fbi he, he was, was acquitted meaning he was not found lie. guilty and now you're no. saying that doesn't mean he didn't lie no well, I'm that means that you don't have mean. good evidence that he, he, what's okay, the evidence what's that he lied ma no What's he the was evidence he that lied he lied to the FBI in the beginning when it came to the Steele dossier. They offered him immunity for his lies in relation to Sergey Milian and what he lied about meeting him at a hotel in Moscow when he never did it. They offered him immunity in exchange. Subsequently, after that meeting, he lied to the FBI and they charged him for lying outside of the immunity. Okay, so you're saying the first one he got immunity from, the second time he got charged with, with lying to the FBI, he was acquitted. That's what you're saying? I, cool. Yes. Cool. Same page. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, next topic, uh, you guys both wanted to discuss the border. Um, okay. Do you want me to ask just different questions, or do you just want to free flow the border here? Which do you, what do you two prefer? Yeah, just kick it off, and then I think we can it, we'll find our way. Oh yeah, I'll give I'll give Maude a second. She's just said, "Hang on a second. And then um, some some people have been complaining that people on mod sides are being muted unjustly. Um, I don't know if you wanted to talk to your mods or say mention something. Yeah, so yeah, let me, let me make sure we're aware of the the rules. Uh, you, you can't just spam the same thing over and over. Uh, you can't write in all caps and no isms, right? So no racisms, uh, no no attacks on uh, somebody's ethnicity, somebody's sexuality, and anything like that. We don't tolerate. So if you're spamming the same thing over and over, you'll get muted. I think I think they do a one minute mute as a warning. Same with caps. Again, those are just like we don't spam because everybody wants to read each other's comments. Your comment is not more important than everybody else's. If if you don't if it do, if nobody sees it spamming it is not the the way to do it make better points uh, and then caps are just used for mods to communicate with each other so if everybody's writing in all caps if anybody's not being if somebody's being muted outside of those things just uh, reach out to one of the mods uh, I would just reach out to Jen I'm I'm not going to patrol it myself but if somebody's if we're muting for any reason other than those uh, I would just say to our mods just don't do that and if you have a concern reach out to Jen. Um, so, um, both you guys mentioned that you guys wanted to come attack to the border. So, um, 
how do you guys feel that Biden is handling the border? And also at the same time, do you think it's inhumane for Governor Abbott to sit there, put razor wire on the border and send the National Guard to basically militarize the border? How do you think that's a great idea? Do you think that's a bad idea? Do you what is your opinion on national security when it comes to the border? We've been using. Uh, let's go with Mod first. Yeah, we've been using razor wire uh, since the 1930s. Um, as far as we use them around our prisons, we don't talk about. Uh, we obviously use it to not only protect the uh, people inside, but to keep obviously keep people out and to keep the people from that are inside the prison from getting out. Um, now, as far as razor wire is concerned, uh, before there was even a afterthought about why we use razor wire people were already essentially risking their own lives coming through. People are, and you just can attribute that to desperation. People are gonna try to come through razor wire, whether it's there or not. People are gonna try to cross the border, whether it's there or not. Do I think that it's inhumane? No, I think the Supreme Court has already determined this ad nauseum. I don't even, I, I, it's already been determined by the court. I don't understand why this is even a discussion, to be honest with you. It, it's a moot point. The Supreme Court determined that it's not. What about you, yeah, RTP? Look, What's your opinion? Well, I would just say, like, uh, and I'm sure, I know, Maud, I'm not making this accusation against you because I know you're not a Christian, but I think Christians would agree that, like, we don't all get our morals from uh, the Supreme Court. I know I certainly don't choose my morals based on what the Supreme Court says. Do I find it personally abhorrent and, and personally inhumane to think about uh, people coming across a river looking for a better life uh, and then running into razor wire? Yeah, I think that's inhumane. Do I think there's a better way? Yeah, I absolutely do. Do I, do I have a problem with asylum seekers wanting to come here? No, not particularly. Uh, what what is what is prevalent and this goes back to the fascist argument what is prevalent in fascism and and largely from the right is this idea that sometimes like reality is just reality and it's okay and it's okay Maude, I'm hold, on, RT, hold on rtp hold on people are talking about my children in the comment section do not bring up my children and, anybody who does that gets gets Please thrown out do immediately not do not bring up people's children. children i'm sorry to interrupt you but i'm not no, no, i'm not my bad. Up with that you can talk about me all day long. Do not bring up my kids at all. That's 100% fair. Nobody should be doing that. And mods, if you see it, boot them immediately. No no exceptions. Sorry about that, mod. Okay. That should not happen. Um, and I hope that's none of my people, even though it sounds like it probably is. Um, I, yeah, I would just say that uh, on the right and in, and in fascist re regimes, you often see this. You have to dehumanize people in order to treat them inhumanely. That's, that's the word. The word is humane, right? In order to treat somebody inhumane, you have to dehumanize them. And I think largely that's what we do, specifically at our southern border. And it's devastating because so many of the people arriving at our southern border are there due to actions by us, things that we do to destabilize their country. We don't care. Like, we'll go in and we'll go after somebody's oil, and we don't care if it fucks up their country. But then we raise hell when those very same people whose country we destabilized show up at our border. The fundamental difference for me as a conservative when I was one, which was up until about 2016 and, and now, is that I believe that you don't have to sacrifice your humanity to, uh, to be engaged politically. You can, you can choose the more humane option, even knowing that there are consequences to that and that there may be uh, side effects to humanity. But I would say I want to side on, on, uh, with humanity. But Maude is correct. This is fairly settled. The Supreme Court has ruled it's okay. It doesn't appear that Abbott, while I think he's disgusting, I think he's inhumane, largely it appears that he's mostly kept the law. Are you advocating not to use razor But the Supreme Court found that razor wire was inhumane five I, to four. I, I think that in, in the case for Texas, as far as them using the razor wire, at some point they may have determined that it was inhumane. Uh, but as, as far as uh, this is concerned with Texas, I don't think that, that the decision was that it was inhumane for them to use the razor wire because the razor wire is still there. Uh, and they actually are continuing put, to put up razor wire. They were only told, well, they had to... that, hold on, they were only told by the Supreme Court that they could cut the razor wire so that they could get across the, you know, get to people and do their thing. 
Um, but yeah, they just had to remove it from like yeah, federal I, land, I think is what the ruling was. Like yeah, Texas but, can do what they do on their land. That's basically so, what the ruling has been. Right. So are we going to advocate for just removing razor wire from prisons as well? Because I would find that to be inhumane then. If no. you buy, why not? Well, it, well, if we want to talk about, yeah, if we want to talk about prisons, I would advocate that the uh, the red state, largely red state uh, policies of imprisoning everybody. And, and until recently, when you had argument. the craziness in Argentina, we were we were putting more people in jail than any country in the world. So I would, uh, yeah, I would advocate, I would advocate that we get rid of a lot of razor wire just so that we can unload our prisons and get and, and stop jailing people nonstop for a for profit prison system. That's so why is, it, why is it inhumane to not to use it at prisons, but not at the border? Because yeah, well, it's more traffic it, it, at yeah. the border. Why are you? Oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, what the fuck, Jesse? <laughs> no, my bad, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, and yeah, I'm good, not, good I'm, question. Listen, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm trying to understand. Like, I. I get it that having the razor wire up, in and, and, and again, I don't even contribute it to Christianity. I mean, if, yeah. if you want to talk, if you want to talk, if, if you're saying that it's inhumane, I would disagree with you, given the fact that we use razor wire for just about anything that we want to make sure that we keep safe. People use razor wire on farms to keep people out of that. You could use it on your private, private. Sure, that's, that's Bob wire. 90, no, because 90%, 90% of the razor wire that was actually erected in the state of Texas is on private land. And that was done through consent decrees with the state of Texas and those property owners. So if the if this the, these private property owners want to put razor wire on them, what law is stopping them from doing that? That's number one. And then the three stretch mile of razor wire with the that the the federal government was complaining about, they were allowed to cut. However, the rest of that land on uh, on that section, the rest of the miles of the 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 other private land. They are absolutely allowed to put razor wire there. And I'm sorry, if you find it inhumane, you're going to have to tell those private owners of their private properties what they can and cannot do. And I would say that's a violation of the supremacy clause. You can't tell private owners that they can't put something up to keep their keep people out of their property. So if you want to call it inhumane, that's fine. But that doesn't detract from the fact that people are allowed to put things up on their property to keep them safe. And to yeah, but... I'm I mean, not arguing that point. I'm not arguing that point. I agree. Yeah, you have so, you have rights on your own property. The question that you asked is why is it inhumane to hide razor wire in a river that women and children are sw are swimming through uh, when it's not inhumane uh, at a prison? And I would I would make a cup. I would wait wait, wait and I would like to answer that question if if I if I may. Do you want to rephrase it? No, what I'm not going to rephrase it. I'm not okay, rephrasing I wasn't it at sure. all. No. Okay, great. Then can I answer it? Then is that right? Sure. Yeah. So here's what I would say. Number one, is it a felony to cross the border? Yes. Illegally, it yes. Is, it is not a felony. It is not a felony. It is a felony. It, is a felony. it can become a felony, but it's not. It's secondly, second, it's secondly, not. secondly, secondly, it's not, you can't become, uh, it's people who are, I can, Maude, mod. I did not interrupt you. Thank you. <laughs> so secondly, you asked me a question, RGB. Maude, and you answered it, and that's fine. I don't, I, yeah, I, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm not giving you, yeah. Secondly, uh, if you come here seeking asylum, you are not breaking the law. That has been ruled on. I didn't say showing that. up, showing up. Well, so that's so that. the people swim, but the people. Legal. Well, let me finish. Mod, please, mod, please. Hold, hold Maude, on, please. hold on, hold on. Maude, I said it, crossing it the border illegally is a felony. Maude, seeking asylum please. is not a felony. Terrific. Now I'm going to finish. So the if you have bar, uh, if you have razor wire in a river, does the razor wire move aside if somebody is an asylum seeker? I don't agree with the razor wire being in the river. So that's not a point of contention for me. If it's on that's private, what I think if it's on, and that's fine. The point of contention is whether or not it's on private land, are people allowed to put up razor wire? Yes. Can you cross into someone's territory into their private property? That is a crime. Crossing, seeking asylum here in the United States, and I want to be clear about this, is not a crime. You are allowed to enter to the, into this country to seek asylum. Crossing the border without that is illegal. Crossing the border and failing to seek asylum at the time allotted it is a crime. That is a felony.
Yeah, but terrific. Everyone, yeah, terrific. On. So, no, not go. Mod, you cut me off, and I let Mod, you cut me off, and I let you go. Now, I'd like to finish my point. Not every, you had, I just you to had a lot of point. time to talk. Not Maude. everyone and, coming across the border Jesus, seeking Maude. asylum, and we know that. Yeah, great. All right, that's too hard to pee. Yeah. So, is it inhumane to use razor wire? Yes. Is it illegal? No. Like you asked me if it's inhumane. I think yes. If you think it's okay for people to be cut up, you think that's humane? Fine. I'm not making a legal argument. I'm not saying that you can't have razor wire to prison. I'm not saying you can't have razor wire protecting your own property. I'm saying it's inhumane. And I don't think for one second that any of those people in Texas gave a flying fuck who got got caught in that wire that was in the water. Like I understand that you disagree with that but let's just keep in mind it was one party that I hid razor wire in a river to where women and children were swimming they hid it from them they they we lost lives there were lives lost i don't if if republicans want to be the rule of law party fine we'll have a discussion about that but don't tell me they're the humane party don't tell me that. that. I, I, don't, I didn't make that assertion at all. I know you're not. I, I wasn't saying that was your assertion. I wasn't saying yeah, that was your assertion. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, I, obviously I'm here representing the Republican Party. And so anything that you say is going to be used against me. So obviously if I'm representing the Republican Party, then it's going to be looking like I'm actually, a, no, I don't agree with that. Where were and, the Republicans and, and, that and came out on. against I'm it? Not here. I am not here to defend the Republican Party. What I'm Republicans did come out against it? I understand that, but I'm not here to defend Ooh. the Republican Party. You just said that's what you were here to do. You're only no, responding because said you said I'm you're defending the, Repu the Republican Party. No, you just Party. said, wait, you just said, I'm right, a Republican out, here, out, and now you're out, saying you don't out, want to defend them? Time out. No, I didn't say time that out, at all. Time out. We're getting out of hand. We're getting out of hand. No, I didn't say. he said, she said no. Yeah. And I'm not. So the next question, the next question on border would be, what is the problem? We obviously recognize that the board, the border problem is a problem. What is the main problem that is it the wall? Is it, you know, cartel? And how would how would how would Trump or Biden go about fixing it? Because obviously something's not working. Do you want to go first? Or you want me to go first, Mon? You can go first. Here. Yeah, look, the border crisis, uh, again, inconvenient for Republicans. The border crisis started in 2019. If you don't believe me, you can go look at a nearly 500% increase that happened in 2019. Now, what happened in 2019? You had the election of Maduro in, uh, in Venezuela, and uh, it was a contested election, and nobody should defend Maduro. Maduro's not a good person, and Donald Trump wanted Maduro uh, gone. Now, I, without being conspiratorial, I'll let you guys connect whatever dots you wanna connect, but here's the facts. Somehow, some of our former service members, or servicemen, showed up in a boat staging a coup in Venezuela. They wanted to get rid of Maduro, but their plan got thwarted. They got caught. You can go on YouTube and you can watch the video of them pulling up on a boat and immediately getting ca getting caught. Now, some people blamed this on Trump, said he was behind this military coup. Of course, he denied it. Fair enough. We'll probably never know. But what we do know is that immediately thereafter, Donald Trump slapped sanctions on Venezuela because they wouldn't work with us on oil. Now, 90% of Venezuela's economy is oil. It's nationalized. They rely on oil money for their country to survive. Donald Trump canceled our agreement with Venezuela. In turn, raising the gas prices for America and completely destabilizing Venezuela as we buy 40% of their, or I think 50% of their oil. 50% of all of the money that they get every year for oil, which is 90% of their economy, comes from the United States. We took, really, their only economy and we cut it in half. And, and, and we know that Donald Trump knows he did this because in 2021, I believe on January 19th, right before he left office, Donald Trump put out an executive order and basically said, hey, due to the destabilization in Venezuela, I'm going to put a temporary stop on sending people back to Venezuela because we had the, the remain in Mexico policy. But Trump wrote an executive order acknowledging that Venezuela was destabilized and that those people were not required to be deported. 
That's why the immigration crisis started. But you look where these people are coming from and you look at how we constantly destabilize their economies. The number one thing we can do to protect our border is stop doing the, the bidding of the oil companies, stop going across the world, uh, inter intervening with other nations' economies, destabilizing them so that our oil barons can make a few more billion dollars. That's the number one thing we could do to fix our problem at the border. Agree. You could probably make a case for saying that Trump sanctions uh, cause for, you know, the increase in mortality rates, the rapid decline of their widespread hunger, uh, and would have accelerated the migration crisis. Um, and you, you could make a case for that, but at the same time, you would have to also, and, and then you, you can look at the charts as well between 2020 and 2021, where it was sort of still destabilized. And then 2022, you saw their economy doing better, but then what happened in the middle of that, you still had a mass migration of people. And if you look at the CBP, you can still, you can still see the spike of people coming to, uh, America from Venezuela. Uh, right uh, before Title 42 ended. Um, so I would say just just in the same sense, you can make the case that Trump sanctions uh, would have contributed to sort of the economic disaster. Well, were they well on their way to a decline uh, during that time? Because during Obama's administration, it fluctuated. It went up, it went down, it went up and it went down. By the time he left office, it was way down. So what did Trump inherit? He inherited a destabilized Venezuela from Obama. He absolutely did. It was in steep decline before he became president. And so he had to deal with that. He put tough sanctions on Venezuela. Yeah. And if and if, if, if their oil... Retaliatory sanctions. Retali Let's well, be clear. Those were retaliatory call, sanctions call because he didn't like Maduro. Call it what you want it. Right. And where is Maduro at? Didn't it still fail? Isn't Maduro still in... Didn't it still fail? Yeah, but now, yeah, but now we've got a bunch okay, of Venezuelans so Biden, at our border. Biden wasn't able to do anything about him either, because I think even the sanctions that he just put on um, uh, Venezuela now, even when they tried to back the opposition, they still failed at it. Then they tried like a fifth round of talks with Maduro that stopped right around October 2021, and then he started talking about easing sanctions sanctions against Venezuela. So. And then he started allowing uh, oil giants to go and resume operations in Venezuela, right? And so, yeah, it made their economy Correct. better, but what was the re direct result of that? They started sending their worst here to America. They started letting people from prison set free, and they started- uh, Yeah, prove that. America. Prove that. Oh, I can show you. Prove that they're sending their worst, so, No, not, pr not also, prove that people came from prison, but prove, you, that's a, that's I mean, a that that hell of a statement. Worst. Number one, number I mean, one, you're saying said, they are, number one, the you're saying they <laughs> are sending as if no, because Mod, because here's what you have, Mod. Hold on, hold on, Mod, Mod. Please, yeah. please, Mod. Here's what you have to prove if that's your statement. You said they are sending their prisoners. Who's they? And and how are they sending the prisoners? Or did people get out of jail? By the way, a lot of those people that are in jail that are leaving prison now, they were put there unfairly, unjustly by Maduro because Maduro okay. was jailing yeah. all of his opponents. Shit. So a lot of these people being released have no home. They are political refugees. They can't stay in Venezuela because Maduro will take care of them like Putin does. So is it true that the jail, that people from the jails and including violent criminals have shown up at our Southern border? Yes, but are they sending them? I don't know about that. So, so why, so why right around the same time that they start releasing people from prisons, we had a mass influx of people from Venezuela at the border. And a lot of these people were not taking asylum. And again, we just had flights. They were sending people, Biden, the Biden administration was putting people back on flights back to Venezuela that did not qualify for asylum because there is no such thing as economic, yeah. uh, uh, economic uh, uh, asylum, right? You have to come from a country uh, when you're coming from this country, there's certain predicates that have to be involved in that. And a lot of these people were getting sent back. Some of these same people are the ones that were released from jail. So I'm Yeah, sorry, so Trump writes an executive order yeah, so it, they can stay here. Biden sends yeah, okay. them back. And government. you guys are like, Biden's you gotta let her, not You got to let her finish, finish RTP. You got to let her finish. That is already finish. corrupt. You have, even if they tried to back the opposition and the opposition failed, you still have the same corrupt leader that you have in Venezuela. What the hell do you think he did? As soon as Biden started releasing sanctions on Venezuela, they set a bunch of people free from jail and it was a whole damn free for all at the border.
because what yeah. happens? They don't have the, they don't have as many people that they have to fucking deal with. They don't have as many people that they put in prison. Now, if you want to contribute that a lot of these people were political opposition to Madero, think all well, good and fine. You are talking about a nation that has been wrought with corruption from the top to the bottom, and you're still sitting here believing that all of those people were just really, really good people that didn't really mean it. Nope, never or, said or, that. Okay, then. So let's never not said that. Like, like these people were. When I didn't. People, uh, okay, so time out, time out, time out, time out. Okay, to the board. time out, time out. You guys are getting out of hand and interrupting each other. So <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, we gotta let each other finish. Okay, I'm talking to both you, RTP and Mod. Okay, let okay. each other finish, and then you can, you guys will have a, a lot of time. But Mod, I did, I did fact check one of yours on eight U.S. Code thirteen fifty seven paragraph three. Within reasonable distance from any external boundary of the United States to board and search for aliens, any vessel within the territorial waters of the United States, any railway car, aircraft, conveyance, or vehicle, and within distance of twenty five miles from any any such okay. external boundary to have access to private lands, but not dwellings for the purpose of patrolling border to prevent illegal entry of aliens in the, into the United States. So like the razor wire isn't up to eight U S code 1357. If it prevents, you know, border agents from doing their job. I just wanted to fact check you on that. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, but I that wasn't a point of contention. I didn't think so. I, I I'm kind of confused because I brought up like several sources, and you haven't fact checked any of his. What which one did I get wrong? I just which one did oh, I get yeah. wrong? Also, also, so I didn't find any. I, I, I didn't find anything on yours wanted. with. I didn't find anything on yours with the Club Forty Seven RTP, and I had two other people look for it too. So if I'll you have like you. an actual, yeah, but you okay, didn't say anything If you want to send it to the group so. chat with us, sure, that'd be greatly appreciated. You fact check me in real time, but not him. What did I get wrong? I, I was I'm sorry, you got some things I had wrong. two people fact check him. Mark. Come on. But now. how was I supposed to know that? You didn't say anything. You just you fact checked me I, three times in real time, and I don't I even think that him. That was, I, I fact I checked him on that. everything he said, and he, I haven't just found anything in real time. And then I didn't even say I didn't even make that assertion. I thought that we deaded the issue as far as the razor wire. Wait, I fact checked his, and his came out good, except for Club Forty Seven and yours. So like everything else I found, it was it, it was truthful that he said. But if it's if it if I fact check it and it was wrong, I'm letting letting you know and letting so what him was know. I, I, I'm trying to understand what I was. The only thing that was wrong was that you said that it should be okay if it's on private property and it's not okay. No, I didn't. It's not in I, the code. What it doesn't it, the the federal so the federal statute does not say that it cannot happen on federal land. I'm sorry, on private property. The razor is... wire. Like, what I'm saying is private ranchers. You said private ranchers on private property is allowed to set no, up I razor said wire. private property owners. I didn't say ranchers. Yeah, on, pri yeah, on private property, which is ranchers usually most of the time. But private property, if they're at the border, they're allowed to put razor wire. They that's should be I allowed said. to. Right. And that's not. That's not true. They're not allowed to. They can't, okay. they can't, in they can't intervene anything for a border agent to come through there. That wasn't, it, it's not intervening. As long as it doesn't intervene, yes, but that doesn't say that they cannot put it on their property. As long as it doesn't intervene, correct? Right. And I think yeah. that I think That's what I'm telling you. Clearly. If it I, does intervene, then it's, I said then that, it's not illegal. I did say okay. that. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah, I thought it was more of a, uh, it was just, I thought it was more of something that we didn't cover, not something that she was like making a claim. It's a, it's a good thing to remember that like, Broadly, what Maud is saying is true. Like almost universally, you can do what you want, but within those twenty-five miles, uh, Border Patrol has to have access. It's it, like neither one of us addressed, neither one of us brought that up. So I think if that's an error on Maud, it's an error on me too. But I do have this clip, and I can send it to you. But I could, I can play it if you want, or do you want to watch it first? Yeah, yeah we can. You can go. You can go ahead and play it. All right, let me let's see if I can get this. Because I, I noticed a lot of people were fact checked trying to find that in the comments too, and then several people message me saying that they couldn't find it it was, so. it was actually harder to find than i thought to be 100 percent honest so let me reload this it's okay. quiet i hope, hope this works give me a second oh i'm gonna check my text so. i know uh, <laughs> one of you are you, rich as hell <laughs> we're gonna give you tax cuts we're gonna pay off our debt 
We're going to give you tax cut. We're I have no idea what this is. We're going to give you tax So this is, at, it's called Club, I think it's called Club 47. It's a club in West Palm Beach, Florida. Sorry, let me turn the volume off. It's a, it's a club in West Palm Beach, and they regularly meet uh, as, a, as donors, and uh, Donald Trump was speaking to them, and he said, uh, obviously, he prefaced that saying, like, you're, you're all rich, and we're going to give you tax cuts. Okay. Yeah, he did give it. rich people tax cuts. I said that in the beginning. Well, this, no, this was him. This is a pledge for his next term. Okay. Yeah, and I think that giving rich yeah, people a tax cut when they benefit, yeah, I think they should be taxed they, more. That was the point. That's, and that's Donald hard. Trump so doesn't. What, I'm trying to find out what was wrong with, with he, what he said. Nothing. I just made the claim that Donald Trump said he was going to cut the taxes of rich people, and Booger's just saying I couldn't find that source, so I gave it to him. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Okay, so... um. Let's go. Let's move to uh, the famous state of Georgia. <laughs> okay, and so um, let's say uh, I don't know how you want to start this or how you guys want to go about this discussing Georgia, but um, yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and free flow because both of you guys mentioned Georgia in the text on what you guys wanted to discuss, and um, we'll go ahead and start with you, Mog. Um. As far as the, I mean, we could. I, I think we wanted to avoid Fannie Willis trial, right? Is that what you wanted to avoid? RTP. I think that was like a fair I, look, one. No, <laughs> we can talk about it. That's it's fine. I just don't think it's. I I personally don't think it's that important. But if you got, if people think it's important, we can talk about it. I'm not opposed to talking about it. Just to me, it doesn't seem that important. Okay. But I, I assume while we talk about Georgia, I assume some of that stuff's going to have to bleed in for you to make your case anyway. So I don't think we should avoid it, Maude. No, if it's I don't part of if it's if it's something you want to bring up, I don't think we need no, to avoid I don't, it. But I yeah. don't, so um, I guess we could go ahead and start off with like uh, we can look at. Um, I think we've discussed this before, Maude. But the question is 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 um, why why would there be a forensic audit needed for Georgia when they did a recount twice in Georgia and then okay. they did a sample? I'm sorry. Are we talking about the election or the case? I'm just asking. The election. The election. I'm sorry. Okay. Because I, I was. Okay? I, thought, I thought in the topic when we said Georgia, I thought we were talking about the Georgia case. That's oh yeah, we could talk about the Georgia. I case. did too. We can go I'm ahead. on the same page. That's why I thought we were talking yeah, about too. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. We can go ahead and talk about the case. So we can go from what you want to mention about the case. Um. I, I wouldn't even know where to go from here. Um. Yeah, well, I can. I can. Flowing. Yeah, I can tell you where I stand, and I'm sure Maude will just disagree with it. Essentially, I think what our disagreement here is going to be that I think this is a very clear, very open and shut case. I think it's clearly Rico. Um, I when I was a kid that we used to, I don't. I've said this, and this might have been a Mormon thing, so I apologize. But there was like these tapes that we would listen to in the car. They were called the Safety Kids, and they would teach you like life lessons. And one of the songs I remember was like, "If you tell one lie, it leads to another. Then you tell one lie." That's what <laughs> happened in Georgia. This this Rico case, and the reason they're doing Rico is because this was lie after lie after lie in a coordinated effort. That's why it fits the Rico charges in Georgia. It starts with a phone call. I guess the the main points for me, the the phone call to Brad Raffensperger. Trump says I need you to find eleven thousand seven hundred and eight uh, and eighty votes because we won the state. He didn't win the state, so that that was a lie. Uh, even if he was, even if he didn't know it was a lie at the time, maybe he was just wrong. He's told on that call. He said the ballots are corrupt, and then this is where it gets a little Rico-y. Now imagine in, this isn't Trump. That this is this is an actual mob boss saying this. Like these these threats are not veiled. He said the ballots are corrupt. It's a crime for you talking to Raffensperger because you know what they did and you're not reporting it. Well, Raffensperger did know what they did. He was right. Uh, and he said, that's a criminal offense. You can't let that happen. That's a big risk. So those sound like threats to me. And then at the end, he said, so Brad, what are we going to do? We won the election. It's not fair to take it away from us. It's going to be very costly in many ways. Sounds like another threat to me. Then they write a letter to Raffensperger. They make a, a silly claim about these 40, I think 43,000 ballots that turned out. Uh, they, they looked into that and there, it, was a, it was a big nothing burger. 
The, the second part of the case that matters a lot is the hackers. Sidney Powell coordinated a group of people, Sidney Powell, somebody who was meeting with Trump at the White House, who Trump called, uh, it, tried to get her to even be, I think, attorney general at one point, like acting attorney or special prosecutor. She was working with Trump and Rudy Giuliani, his, his attorney. She, uh, she got a group together to break into voting machines. They, they brought a, a team of forensic experts and Missy Hamlin, who worked for the GOP and worked on the election board, let them in. They went through the voting machines. And in their words, they scanned every freaking ballot. And then they sent that data to the other co-conspirators. They were not legally not allowed to do that. They have no legal access to those uh, voting machines. They have no legal right to scan those ballots, and yet they did it. Then you move on to Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, who were uh, absolutely uh, just trashed by the media, by Donald Trump himself, uh, with fake claims that they were passing around a USB drive in what turned out to be mints. You had Stephen Lee, who is a chaplain, show up to her house, knocked on uh, Ruby Freeman's door, and uh, she didn't answer because she was scared. The police pulled him over on the way, uh, on his way out. We have the body cam footage. He just said, hey, I want to give her pro bono services. And then we know what he did is then he convinced Harrison Floyd, who's the leader of Black Voices for Trump, to try and arrange a, a conditional immunity deal saying like, hey, you're going to be charged with a crime, but if you work with us, we'll give you an, um, an immunity deal, but you have to, you have to uh, admit to election fraud. Of course, she didn't do that. And the president and those around him continuously made her life hell to the point she can't leave her house. I, I think those, those facts alone are going to be pretty hard to exonerate President Trump on. Okay. Um, so as far as the indictment is concerned, well, let's do that. Do you think that communicating with the DOJ uh, and uh, any of any federal agencies pursuant to an investigation is a quintessential part of the duties of the executive office office of the president in the take care clause. Meeting meeting with the DOJ, you said. Mm -hmm. Communicating with anybody the DOJ as it pertains to an investigation pursuant to election law. Uh, no. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Is communicating with state officials about the administration of federal elections and urging them to uh, exercise official responsibilities um, as far as the uh, their core uh, their uh, core election uh, responsibilities is that against the law? It can be. Okay, so I ask it one more time. Um, so communicating with state officials about obeying federal election laws and their core issues surrounding any sort of election laws and making sure that those things are done are against the law. It can be. Yeah. If, if what you're doing is you're, yeah, if you're telling them that they're breaking a law that they're not and you're threatening them uh, with prosecution for a law that they're not, they're not breaking, that's part of this RICO charge Got is it. that they were lying. That's why I brought that up. That right. they, I guess, I was, they told him he was breaking the law really, when he wasn't. I wasn't, I wasn't done. I heard I answering your question. Mod. I know. I heard. I heard all that. It was just a yes or no. I'm not. I don't. I'm not going to do yes or no's, Mod. We're going to have an open conversation. I'm going to be able to yeah, explain my answers. Yeah, but you did get a turn, and then I, I. You were asking him questions, and he was answering. I did. It, it wasn't meant to extrapolate. I was just saying yes or no. I wanted to make sure okay. we had a. Well, I'm not going to do that. I, I'm not going to allow you to be vague on purpose. Like I'm going to answer not the question vague. how I want. Yeah, let's not let's not let's not do yes or no questions because you I know you were not going to want to mod because you were going to want to explain. I'm okay with least. yes or no question. It's okay. not a yes or no answer. That's the that's the simple answer. It can be a crime. Okay. That's what he's accused of. I understand that. I got that part. I heard that part. Um, as far as urging members of the uh, vice president uh, to exercise their official responsibilities, you're saying is against the, I, I can kind of preclude that that's what uh, we're saying here. As far as Brad Raffensperger, did Rav, I, I do believe that Rav, Brad Raffensperger also stated that he was not at all threatened. He came out publicly and said that he was not at all threatened. I don't even think Brian Kemp even, not even Brian Kemp came out. There was no one, anyone on that phone call never stated that he was threatened. I don't even say there was not, not even a charge for threatening a public officer. So where are we getting that there were threats made to Brad Raffensperger? Because I absolutely unequivocally know that even Brad Raffensperger said that it was 
kind of out of the ordinary for a phone call, but <laughs> yeah. never once did he state that he felt threatened. Yeah, this is this is Brad Raffensperger's exact words. I felt then and still be, believe today that this was a threat. Uh, no. I, oh, okay, oh, just no. I'm reading the direct quote. I'll drop. I'll go ahead and okay, I'll drop ahead the drop link the here. He okay, called he it a direct said threat. He, was not, he said it was not a threat. Okay. He did not feel threatened on that phone call. Okay. Just, do I, how many he times do I need to read it? That's perfectly fine. I'm not going to say something I didn't think I was being honest about or truthful well, about. You, I believe that you thought you were being honest. You're just wrong. No, I'm not wrong. Okay, so this this uh, direct quote that we have from the AP News here, in quotations, saying exactly this, that I viewed then, as I do now, that it was a threat. Um, he said that it was not a threat. I felt then, and still believe today, that this was a threat. Obviously, others thought so, too, because some of Trump's more radical followers have responded as if it was their duty to carry out this threat. <laughs> um, okay, so... Well, do you have so he thought it was a threat. That, do you yeah, have proof that he said it wasn't a threat, Mod? Yeah, give me a second. Okay. you're looking that up this is from the book integrity counts um i don't know who wrote it it's uh i don't know who was interviewing him uh but that's what he said in this book which i believe i don't know if it's out yet but that's where the reference is from from and they have audio uh, recording for this book he was quoted for this book and that's, that's it was a quote. quote from a book it's his quote to somebody who wrote a book, who's writing a book. So it called... wasn't his direct words. It was quoted. No, out it of is book. his. No, 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 no. These are his direct words that he gave to the author. He was interviewed for so, this so wait book. A Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> don't, <laughs> didn't, Ma, don't do this. Don't try and backdoor out of this. This is one of those times you should just admit you're wrong and we move sure. on. I just want to make sure that it was wrote in a book and someone else said that he said it. No, the person who wrote the book interviewed Brad Raffensperger for mm -hmm. the book. And in the interview for the book, mm -hmm. which he recorded, Brad Raffensperger said, I felt then and still believe today that this was a threat. O others obviously thought so too, because some of Trump's more radical followers have responded as if it was their duty to carry out this threat. Okay. Okay. Um, Brad Raffensperger testified that I didn't Wait, hold on. Raffensperger wrote the book. It's him who wrote the book. I apologize. He wrote the book. This is his direct quote. He wrote the fucking book. I apologize. I thought somebody else wrote it. He wrote the book. So is he lying in his book? Uh, he very well could be because he... <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, he's just lying. Yeah. Okay, so in his uh, testimony, uh, he said that he did not take it as inappropriate um, when he was on the phone call with Meadows and Trump. And this is per CNN. He said he never took it as inappropriate um, and that they hoped that he said that we hoped that we could reach an agreement in the spirit of co cooperation and compromise. Um, and he unequivocally said that it was not a threat. He said the president was asking me to do something I knew was wrong, but I wasn't going to do it. The facts uh, did not support his statements. Um, he he. <laughs> He never said that it was a threat. Now he writes he writes this in his book, but he testified before the committee and said that he was not threatened. Now what he no wrote, no he said it was not inappropriate, and you are yeah, dancing so around this. You are playing word, word games to get around this. You said inappropriate. He said it. Read the quote he, again. Yeah. Hold he on. Wrote that in a Hold book. on. So fact check. Yeah, he wrote it in the book Integrity Counts, which was released Tuesday. And right. Raffensperger depicts a man who's defied pressure from Trump to alter election results, but also reveals a public official settling political scores as he seeks to survive a hostile Republic primary environment and win in re-election. He also reflects that, it, including death threats texted to his wife, an encounter with men who he says has been t take, staking out his suburban Atlanta home. And then, and he said, I felt then and still believe today that this was a threat, Rathisberger writes. Others obviously thought so, too, because some of Trump's more radical followers have responded as if it were a duty to carry out this threat. Um, and like I said, he stated that in a book, but in his 
when he was in the committee and he testified, he stated that it was not a threat. He did not feel threatened. Said, no, you're, you're, lying. Saying, See, you're lying there, right now. You, you he said it wasn't inappropriate. Me? Read it again. You, he said it wasn't you, inappropriate. Okay, I'm, okay. Read can it. Can you send me that? Just give me one second because my son keeps talking to me. Hold on. Yeah. I'll be happy to read it while while we're waiting. R exactly what she wrote from CNN. Uh, Rath rather, Raffensberger testified that I didn't take it as inappropriate when Meadows told him on the January 2021 call that he hoped they could reach an agreement to allow the Trump side to look fully at the election data. He did not think it was appropriate when Mark Meadows told him that he hoped they could reach an agreement to allow Trump's side to more fully look at the election, which Raffensperger did. This has nothing to do with whether or not he felt threatened. This has to do with him responding to Meadows, making it saying, hey, like, could we figure out a way to get more transparency so we can look at this? You're, you're conflating two very different issues and, and, and neither, and he at no point says he did not feel threatened. Okay. I, I guess I'm not going to get a chance to say anything, so that's fine. No, no, you got you got time. Okay, thanks. C can you send me? Can you send me though where you say he said it's not a threat, or tell me where I can find yeah, it? Yeah, I'm trying to find the transcript. I got my. I have to go in a minute because my son is all over the place. Is, but uh, Maude, is the title is the title fact check Trump uh, uh, Trump falsely claims Raffensperger said right. former and president. I, and I'm agreeing okay. with you that it was stated I can send in the link. book, right? And I understand that, but Brad Raffensperger in a testimony in front of Congress stated that he was did not feel threatened. He said that, that? that he did something differently in his book. I'm trying to find the video. I'm having a tough time finding it. Ra yeah, Raffensperger testified before Congress about this? Uh, or it, Congress or some committee or whatever the case may be. Give, just give me a second. In the meantime... It's a good chance for me to, you can, you can do your things. Let me grab a drink out of the freezer real quick. A drink out of the freezer? Wouldn't it be frozen? Or are you talking about alcohol? Are Mormons, are Mormons allowed to drink? Oh yeah, he's ex Mormon. That's right. <laughs> That's so serious. Were you Jack? Mo Were you Jack Mormon or Mormon? Oh, I was like Mormon, Mormon. Like I went on a Mormon missionary or mission. I was Mormon until I was about the. Uh, me leaving Mormonism kind of coincided with me leaving the GOP in, in 2015, 2016. It all kind of came together. Could I make a quick yeah. announcement? I wanted, uh, I wanted the conservatives here to feel uh, welcome and feel like they're, they're part of this. And so what I did is I went to the store before and I got some Mountain Dew. <laughs> so that you uh, Republicans can feel at home. So I'm gonna oh I'm gonna sip. God. It's a diet because I'm it's late and I don't want sugar. Uh, but just in solidarity with the Republicans, I'm gonna drink a Mountain Dew. So there we, there we go. <laughs> I left it in the freezer a little too long. I'm, I'm pretty sure if you were if you were gonna drink anything to make like a conservative, it would probably be like a PBR or a Bud Light. I thought about Bud Light. I thought about it, but no! I thought that would be too pandering. No, would... Yeah, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Or a Dr. Pepper, yeah, Dr. Pepper is a good one. Uh, sorry, is Ma dealing with her kid? Uh, I think so. Did she send you that that CNN? I can I can drop it in the Discord. Probably I haven't got it. No. I got the fact check, the BrennanCenter.org for justice. Fact check, Trump, George is called Ratzensberger. Oh, CNN.com. Just dropped fact it, check. yeah. Okay, so you'll see in like the, the quote that she's quoting is in... Like one, two, three, four, like, uh, it was early. Where Back was to it? Trump falsely claims Raffensperger said former president didn't do anything wrong. Um, no, I'm, I'm actually, um, on the transcripts, uh, and he was, uh, so I'll What was the transcript from, Maude? The transcript was from the January 6th commission, and then okay. I'll just concede the point because he does call it a hollow threat. So I can see that it was, he took it as hollow, but not a threat. Yeah, well, 
assuming that he didn't he didn't know like if they could do anything about it but i the problem we have here now is we have donald trump threatening him brad raffensperger saying it was a threat uh it sure sounds like a threat his life was threatened he said it was a that's going to be he said it was a hollow he said yeah, that's going to be that's so, going to be hard for donald trump to beat that charge i think well uh given the fact uh and again I, I don't actually know if every single thing within the indictment is going to be uh, communicated. Uh, um, I don't think that everything in the indictment was communicate, uh, communicated clearly. And so I, I'm going to I want to point out one other one other thing that I think is important to highlight is the fact that based on the so in one of the motions to dismiss the one of the attorneys alleges that Donald Trump was charged with conspiracy to um, conspiracy to impersonate a public officer. And yeah. one of the things that, uh, and this is more or less a point of contention with me, um, in the principle of what we would call, in Georgia state law, what we would call a public officer would be akin to the same thing as a police officer. Uh, and then historically with the case law in Georgia has only been used with um has only been used with dcfs workers or someone impersonating a police officer and so we have blair v uh, uh dcfs DC is that what you said DCFS DCF worker. correct and so when they actually bring up uh some of one of the arguments that they actually bring up which i i find to be pretty valid is the fact that you can't actually charge someone with being a, a public officer or you can't actually charge someone with impersonating a public officer when that person is not a public officer well that's not what he's being charged with he is he is being charged in count nine of the indictment he's being charged with impersonating a public officer He's being charged with soliciting and conspiring impersonation with intent to deceive. That's the so he, he's his role. His role is not impersonating the officer. His no, role is the cons it, his is, his role is the charge. soliciting and conspiring. No, no, that's incorrect. That's um, the, I'm reading the charge. Being charged and count nine of the indictment. So one of the counts. It says, um, one of them is violation of a public oath of a public officer impersonating a public officer and the conspiracy to uh to impersonate a public officer that's in what i just said yeah so we're saying the same thing why are you telling me i'm wrong yeah. i think i just said because the you were first saying time you left out conspiracy yeah no, you I didn't say conspiracy the no first time. i i absolutely said conspiracy i said it okay, i missed it then oh fine i missed it but yeah, that's like that's a charge that's gonna I, like that's gonna be pretty okay, so easy to th prove. That's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, why would he be charged with impersonating a public officer when Georgia state law has already stated what public officers are? It's clearly lined out in OCJA 16-10-23 and 16-10-20, uh, 16-10-1, and 16-4-8. Uh, yeah, I don't think you're right. Uh, I don't think you're right about that. Um, I'm not I'm like not correct about that. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's, let's be clear. It. He has uh, in the Georgia indictment there are 13 charges. Okay. There are three counts of solicitation of violation of oath of office by public officer, two counts of cons conspiracy to commit forgery in the first degree, two counts of conspiracy to commit false statements in writings, two counts of false statements in writings, one count of violation of the Georgia RICO Act, one count, and here is the count that you're talking about, of conspiracy to commit impersonating a public officer when you when you are charged with a conspiracy you do not have to be the person impersonating the public officer again this is a conspiracy to commit impersonating a public officer that's how these rico charges work anybody involved in this conspiracy yeah, to impersonate public a public officer, officer is involved yeah, in the conspiracy they're they not. are public officers and and there is okay, and so. look this has been charged before in georgia uh, they've used this exact thing, and I think they people for that were police officers and DCFS workers. What's DCFS? DCFS is a a person who works for uh, social services. Okay, so Caldwell versus the state was a was a was right. a a case in Georgia, and it right. laid out that this. So this was 
um, somebody called, I think Stephen Caldwell, he mm -hmm. was the head of the Department of Labor. And uh, he was running for re-election. And it, one of the things Trump's trying to do is like say that if you're running for election, you're disqualified, but he's running for re-election. And what they did is in the Department of Labor, they maintained control over the department through, and I'm reading directly, through a series of qualifying crimes, theft, uh, including theft by deception, extortion, false statements, and false, sw false swearing. So these are public officers. And what he's being accused yeah, is, Hold on. What he's being accused. Hold on. What he's being accused of mm -hmm. is in impersonating an officer and somebody like and a secretary that? of state or an or no, uh, an elector. Me, that's that's a completely false. They're equating that with the false elector scheme. They're saying that he was conspiring to have someone to uh, make themselves or make themselves look like they were a, a false elector. So that is they, yeah they did that yes. that happened okay but an elector is not a public officer so President right that's Trump, not who this is that's not yes, this that's charge exactly, here no that's there exactly that's not the it, charge here that is exactly what the charge is no it's not yes, no it so if you go if you file if you file fraudulent certificates and you go mm -hmm. through what you believe are the proper mm -hmm. channels but you don't have the proper authority mm -hmm. to submit that certificate you are by definition impersonating the person who is allowed to do that I they created you. fake sets of electors and they no. created fake yeah all of those okay. so we'll go all we'll of those go have through, been used we'll count nine on the indictment and i'll read to you exactly what the allegation is and why they're trying to charge him with that. So we'll go to count nine. So page 76. So if, um, Maud, you said 76. What were you saying? What were you saying, RTP, about them not being, they're not saying that electors or public officers are saying what exactly i mean i need to put we need to pull up uh nine because i can't remember the exact wording i want to get it right it was you said 76 is that right mon okay 76 I, I, indictment thank you um let's get the wording right because i how i'm saying it is probably so not the correct grand jury and count so count nine of 41 in the grand jurors aforesaid in the name and behalf of the citizens of georgia do charge and accuse donald john trump rudy will uh william uh, Louis Giuliani, Jesus, John Charles Eastman, Kenneth John Chesbro, Ray Stallings, Smith the Third, Robert David Cheely, and Michael A. Roman with the offense of conspiracy to commit impersonating a public officer and four said accused of individuals and persons concerned in the commission of a crime together with indicted and unindicted co-conspirators on the county of Fulton, day of Georgia, uh, state of Georgia, between the 6th day 2020 and the 14th day of 2020, unlawfully conspiring to certain individuals to falsely hold themselves as duly elected and qualified presidential electors from the state of Georgia, public officers with intent to mislead the president of the United States Senate, the archivist of the United States, the secretary of the state of Georgia and the chief judge of the United States district court for the Northern, Northern district of Georgia. So they were alleging that they were trying to impersonate presidential electors. Oh, wait, well, hold on. So they, they committed, so let's remember where the, where the uh, comma is there. So what they said is they unlawfully conspired to cause certain individuals, that's the electors, to falsely hold themselves out as the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from mm -hmm. the state of Georgia, which right. they were not. So they conspired to get them to fake it. And, but wait, mm -hmm. so they caused certain individuals to hold themselves out as duly elected and qualified presidential electors. But who else did they deceive? public officers with the intent to mislead the president and here are the public officers listed mm -hmm. president of the united states senate the archivist of the united states the georgia secretary of state and the chief judge of the united states district court for the northern district those are the four yeah, these officers are, these are not officers yeah. no they're not officers because no the president of the senate is not an officer okay. the archivist so, the who? archivist of the no. Wait, how is he not, not a, how is he not an officer? The vice, because the vice president is not an officer. If he is the same as the president, presidents are not officers. It, it didn't say the, the vice president. Did, prove affirmed. to me that these people aren't hold officers. On. Hold on. This was already affirmed by the Supreme Court with the ruling, with the case uh, here in Colorado, the Supreme Court case. Griffin, they upheld Griffin 
in the filing. So we already know that presidents are not officers in the same token that vice presidents would not be either. Cool. That has nothing to do with this because he didn't defraud the president or the vice president. I, no, I he didn't. Why, I don't. It literally says Wait, here. Unlawful, show, show me that the okay, secretary of, of state is not here. an officer. Let me finish. I said the secret. Now, this Georgia secretary of the state, right? Conspiring to commit impersonation. So in trying to impersonate them, meaning you're trying to say that you are them. Yes, that's one thing, right? But as far as the president of the Senate, the archivist, and, and any one of these people, a judge, right? They were not trying yeah. to impersonate any of them. And this, no. is, in, this is in the indictment. It specifically says, they all, hold on, they unlawfully conspired to, cert, to cause certain indiv individuals to falsely hold themselves out as duly elected and qualified presidential electors. This is the charge connected with the alleged crime and I get that you're trying to say that they were trying to impersonate these people, but they cannot impersonate any one of these people, okay? But they're not at, they're not saying that they're trying to impersonate these people. Were they trying to defraud these people? No. Sure. But they no, were not they were, to they were imper any, they are impersonating elect with again, electors are not public officers mod they nobody's saying that they're soliciting it does absolutely to mod let me finish now i'm going to answer now i'm going to answer mod mod now i'm going to answer it absolutely mod says, please it, mod please it's not your turn anymore it's my turn why soliciting you, and conspiring mod please for the love of god mod please i just I, let you go on for a long time that i was trying to make and Great. you're trying to tell me that i'm wrong about it because you're trying yes to and now let me hold, explain why hold, you're wrong hold, and hold you can decide if i'm wrong time out time out time out at, time at out, all. Time time out, time We're getting out, sensitive. No, I'm not being sensitive at all. When I try to make a point. Mod. Mod. All right. So the fact check is you said that the president of the Senate is not an officer. He's, a, he's the vice president. He's not an yeah, officer. Yes. The Constitution provides for two officers to provide over the Senate. Article 1, Section 3, Clause 4 designates the vice president of the United States as the president of the Senate. In this capacity, the vice president. Officer. Yes, it literally says it right here. The vice president is not an officer. Yes, he's he an officer when he's a, when he's the president of the Senate. In that capacity, he's an officer. Okay. Read the first sentence again. What did it say he was? Read it again. The Constitution provides for two officers to provide over the Senate. Article two one, officers? section three, clause. Yeah, two officers. Okay. And they, in the capacity, he's not a vice president is an officer, but in the capacity of the Senate, president of the Senate, he is an officer. Which is probably why they said pre okay, president so of the you, Senate and not this? vice president. Isn't that right, Maud? Do you think no, it's weird I, that they no. didn't say vice president, they that they the said se uh, president of the Senate? Okay, so this was affirmed through Griffin, and it just recently, in the Supreme Court ruling, they stated that they are not officers, and it is clear what 14.3 says, who are officers? Who's, who's not an officer according to Griffin? Read it word for word. The senators, representatives, and I can't remember all of it, but senators, representatives, House of Representatives, and Senate. Does it say He's president the of the president Senate? Is not an officer. Does it say president of the Senate? No, it does not. Okay, it that's the not, point here. When he's acting as president of the Senate, he's an officer. Okay. When he's acting yeah, as okay, vice president, okay. he's not an officer. Fuck One me. more thing. One more thing. One more thing. <laughs> the Constitution <laughs> no, names the vice president of the United States as the president of the Senate. In addition to serving as the presiding officer, the vice president has the sole power to break a tie vote in the Senate and form a presides over the receiving and counting of the electoral ballots to cast presidential he's elections. A, okay. So yes, he's an officer. He's not a, okay. So no, he, the vice president isn't an officer, but when he's acting as the president of the Senate, that's what makes him an officer. The president of the Senate exactly. is an I, officer. I, I feel like, like, are you arguing this or is he supposed to? Because I no, can't I'm even, fact checking. I can't even, I'm fact checking. How are you fact checking it? me when you haven't, like, I'm not even allowed to even fucking finish a thing. And I know you guys think this is funny, but this has been completely. I'm not, I'm not laughing. I'm, I, I am. I, I at this point, I'm done. If you want to say that I'm running, I'm completely done. You are. Yeah. Right, if you right. leave if now, you, you are running. Right. If you, it's it's eleven o'clock at night. I've I've put up with the disrespect for way too long. <laughs> disrespect, Mod. No, grow up. Grow up, Mod. Mod. If you we took speaking time, you have more speaking time. I haven't time. even been grow able up. to get a point. If you want to say that I'm running, fine. You can yes. go ahead and say that. Yes. I haven't even been able to get out my point. And then when I told you 
that presidential electors, I've been trying to finish this statement for the entire time. You can call me a track star. That's fine. I don't run from shit. You're I'm running right now. For the last two fucking hours yeah. trying to make a point, and all I've been done was cut the fuck off. And Jesse, oh. you've been more on his side and helping yeah, cause him. Because I'm right, Maude. Because I'm right, and you keep getting things wrong. You're not and right. he fact you're checks you, and it's wrong. This, and it, what upsets and conservatives more than That's anything why you keep is being me. wrong. Because you know you're wrong. I know. And you're yeah, I know I'm wrong. The yeah. When I sat yeah, here and said that presidential electors are not electors, I read to you what they were alleging this was in the motion to file the judge even looked at it and agreed with it and you all are still sitting here saying that i'm incorrect about it but that's perfectly yeah. fine you could call me i've sat here for two fucking hours and i put up with the disrespect for too long if you want to call me a runner that's perfectly runner. fine but you are dead ass wrong you yeah, haven't you allowed going, me man? to finish a fucking statement this entire yeah. time that i have been here you have been completely unfair i didn't like this we weren't even supposed to talk about fascism we said that we were going to cut that out and then all of a sudden you curveball throw it at me i thought we weren't even me? talking about it i didn't do Wait, shit. What? that was jesse we what are you getting mad at me for to talk about it jesse we were you guys yeah you guys no, said we throw curveballs and i threw curveballs I'm done. If you want to take your dub, fine. But this has been yeah, completely unfair. I've been disrespected. My yeah. people have been talked about in the <laughs> this comments. Isn't, this isn't even fair, Ron. It is. No, it's not been fair. Th because, been but fair the, the, the discussion all. is and between gonna, both no, of you and I'm on the keep count. Saying that, Jesse, you have picked, I picked you for a reason because I thought that you were going to be fair in this. I, I am being fair. A fucking point. How am I, I not, not being been fair? fair at all? Just a. I just want to point out, I let Mod pick. I let Mod pick who moderated. That's how unfair I am. No, but I'm no, I'm not talking to you, RTP. I'm talking to you, Jesse. You have been completely unfair. I've been fair to you both of you guys. You've been helping He's him. interrupted you, you and I fucking said so. And then you interrupt him. And then uh, now I'm fact checking. Right, listen, to be to be fair. I'm literally fact to be fair, I'm not mad at RTP at all. Jesse, you've done a great job. I'm gonna go. It's eleven o'clock at night and I'm tired. I am not going to keep sitting here. And then your comments, you haven't muted anyone. You've muted all of my people. People Let have been disrespectful. Let it all out, Mod. Let it all out. <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm just going to go. You can take your dog. Cool. I, I really Thank don't. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Have a I great day. I appreciate night. it. All right, Jesse. I appreciate it, man. I thought you See did what your you best. started. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, look, it was going to go like this. But now I'm going to take my victory lap. The reason Jesse couldn't fact check me is because I fact check my own stuff. The reason I didn't bring up every charge in the RICO charges in Georgia is because some of the charges aren't going to stick. And some of the charges are better than others. And this one, once again, is soliciting and conspiring impersonation with intent to deceive the Senate, the judges, and the AG, who are all officers, as Jesse correctly pointed out there. Look. I'll issue the challenge to the next liberal. Anybody who wants uh, mods leftovers, feel free, DM me. I'll schedule it. I'll give you the same amount of time. We'll get a moderator. Jesse, I, I think you did a good job. You're welcome back anytime. I'm willing to do it. You're, hey, if you ever need another moderator, let me know. I'm sorry it went Might south. Might be out of a I job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, man, that's what it happens. Like, I try to be uh, fair to both sides. It was, it was going good. I thought I was doing good, but I guess not. But I guess I got to go have a talk with her. But Best of luck hey, to thanks you. for I having me it. on your platform. I love your people. I love you. Take it easy, brother. Thanks, buddy. And cheers. Here's a Mountain Dew for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good night, bud. Good night. Uh, I will uh, look. If anybody wants to talk, what is it? It's nine o'clock. I I'm happy if people want to jump in a panel. If people want to have a discussion, we can do it. Uh, I'm about out of words, but load up that panel. We'll uh, we'll bring anybody up who wants to talk. We'll do we'll do this. Uh, just one at a time as as we go. Uh, Ed, Jen, will you take care of the box for me? Actually, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Let's see. Oh, who... Jen's got it. You're here. What's up, IB? How's it going, man? How's it going? I'm feeling fairly good. I I would be too after that. That was freaking amazing, man. <laughs> that was that was tough. That was tough. All right, let's see here. Who do we got? We got Shay. I'll bring her up. Let's go ahead and let's see here. Hi, Shay. Hey, Arctic. Hey, Jay. 
Uh, I'm just gonna oh, pack. Oh, <laughs> Z Pack's gonna piss off every mod person if they're still here. <laughs> they're like, the last person they want to see is Z Pack. <laughs> oh, no. He has his whole official setup now. <laughs> hey. I got the floor is yours. Uh, whatever you want to talk about. I mean, first of all, great job, Jay. You just cooked Trucker. the entire evening. You're really good at what you do. And you. Uh, that ended. Um, the way I knew it would end, but I thought it was going to happen a lot faster. So hey, RTP. say that anyway. Let let me just point out that the other day when Maude and I had a debate, she got frustrated on the same topic about the electors, <laughs> and and actually like the debate ended. Right? She got frustrated at me on that same topic, saying that these electors were somehow qualified for the job, and I just kept telling her they're not. And she just, that was it for her. So when it happened again, I was like, when this topic came up, I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh. That's what I said. <laughs> she did last yeah. longer. She did last longer. I would have lost a bet. If I took a bet, yep. I'd have, she lasted longer than I thought because I, I wouldn't Hold have bet. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question? So why didn't we verify her credentials? I, Priscilla, oh! I, Priscilla, I told you this in my Discord. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to bring people up to smear them. That's not what I do. It's not a smear. She goes around claiming I don't, that Priscilla, she's an I asked you, and she's not. I asked you specifically in my Discord not to bring this up. I told you I wasn't going to bring this up. It's not how I want to do it. Right. If you have, your, like, right. you have your own platform, you can do that on yours. Right. Not here. Like, we, we just want a real debate here. <clears throat> Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It was a relatively decent one to start out with. The part of your debate that really kind of got me like hot was the conversation about the everyone calls it razor wire. It's concertine wire. About it not being inhumane. It's absolutely inhumane. It it was designed for the military. The blades are 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 curved. They have a hook on e either side. And it's literally designed to dig deeper the more you struggle. It's like quicksand. Ugh. And it's like getting hung up in a slinky. It is. It was designed for enemy combatants on the field of battle. It was not designed. It, it, uh, that just. And no, farmers do not use concertine wire because it would destroy their livestock if they got hung up in it. Yeah. It yeah. just. It's crazy. That was a crazy argument. That just pissed me off. Yeah, so it's, at it's one point, humans. at one point, she mentioned something about Biden sending three hundred and twenty thousand um, illegals uh, here on a plane, uh, and Elon Musk had tweeted out to all of his followers um, saying he committed treason. But I just want to say for the record, that is a parole program for Cubans, Haitians. Nicaraguans and Venezuelans, and it is absolutely uh, all over the place. It is not a secret. It was on the media. It was promoted in press releases. Uh, press releases. It's on the U.S. CIS website. And Biden is not chartering those flights. Individuals are buying their own tickets on commercial flights. And so, and and every president has used this this program except for Donald Trump. Big surprise. Deepak, Big fucking surprise. Why are you using facts? Why am I using facts? Yes, and specifics. I, I, I'm sorry. I try. I try. I get yelled at. I got yelled at in their live yesterday because of a message that I sent to RTP. But, you know, that's been brought up several times. But I guess. Yeah, I was bad, though. I kept score on the bottom. I'd be like, oh, no. okay. Oh, I wasn't How keeping I score. I, I stopped at four zero. But when you guys went to the Constitution about the officer, I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I'm glad they went to the Constitution. And she argued. Yeah. She said no. I'm sitting here thinking, I, I, I was like, I'm ready to throw shit at the wall because it's like, how are you arguing with the Constitution? Fucking, how do you fucking do that? It's subject to interpretation. Anybody I mean. feeling bad? For well, no, Jesse, actually, right? it's not. Actually, it's not subject <laughs> yeah, to interpretation. I, I love Jess. I love Jess. Jess. He's gonna catch hell. He's gonna yeah. catch hell. 
No, no, no. Oh, the wait, 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 before we get before good, we get too far boy, in. in trouble. Oh yeah. Before um, we get too far in, when when mods said something about us uh, us mods muting people in the comments, we right did when not. she said that, I grabbed a screenshot. There were literally three muted accounts the whole live. Two of them were spam. And that was it. Oh, you know what? I did. I blocked one person. It was the show the pictures. I'm sorry. Yeah, I took, the, I took a screenshot sorry. and I posted it in the <laughs> chat in the Discord, so I'm sure it'll I get passed block. around. Well, so. I'm, glad and, and, RTP, I'm glad RTP went to, and also uh, who the mod was. I'm, I know RTP. I didn't know the mod. Um, but when you went and you and you said, when when you both said, when the vice president is operating in that capacity, he's yep. an officer. I was like, I was glad you guys did that because it's like, I was sitting here like I I know the Constitution and I was just waiting. And when you when you said, well, when when he's operating in that capacity, he's an officer according to the Constitution. I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> and this is and this yeah, is the great thing about RTP. R RTP just does this so well. Like he he knows exactly what to say because when I often get tripped up because I I'll get like caught in some question like can you tell me what th what x or y and z means and I'm like well I don't know what the fuck that means you tell me <laughs> but like RTP is like very good at just like getting straight to the point like with the yes and no answers he's like I'm not giving you a yes and no answer I'm I'm going to give you an explanation because th that's the stuff that is insane like the yes or no answer like so vague you know you know, I, I just want to say. Hold that, on one know. second. I just want to address something in the comments. Um, her kids were not mentioned by no, anybody no, we on actually, her side between or the mods. on my side. No, somebody asked. Yeah, between in the, the mods, comments. we actually. Yeah, no, between the. I was just going to say between the mods, we actually did look in the comments. There was a comment about oh, yeah. her not believing that it's inhumane to hurt kids. That was the comment. That, that's uh -huh. the only comment mentioning kids that we could find. Uh, and somebody in the mod chat actually had a screenshot of it. But nobody brought up her children at all. Of course not. Why you would they? I, I just want to say this real quick. You slay, dude. Like, I, I'm going to say you slay her. Like, I was, like, everything that you did, like, I've had debates with this woman. And, you know, I wanted to, like, no facts, no evidence. And then the crazy part, when you debunk her or you actually give her evidence, you know the first thing she does? She yells at you. Like and she goes into this friendship. I'm like, I'm like, woman, you've lost. And then like, did you notice the thing that she does, I, bro? Like I said, you slay the beast tonight, and and man, I applaud you, bro. Like I literally have a, more more respect for you. You know, hey, you I, I, I think I was more excited. Up? I say this, debate more of them, because you know what? They, you know, what they do is they make a fool of themselves. Me you know, too, Z-Pack. I was waiting for this tonight. Out that, uh, <laughs> can I also point out that she was really wrong on the whole immigration law and how coming yeah. across the border is like a right. felony. Yeah. I mean, that was completely wrong. There's Booga Goon. <laughs> there's you know, there's a lot of things that need to happen hey, before Jesse. you behave with a felony. <laughs> Yeah, and Rollo, don't you like you have to step foot on U.S. soil to even a claim, to claim asylum? I mean, it's just you have yeah, to be absolutely. here to do that. There's really yeah, no that. such thing as an illegal border crossing. No. Well, do you know, guys know Dark Luscious um, Camaro? You guys know yeah. her. Yeah. Well, yeah. Camaro, what she did, she went down to the border, right? And she showed what's going down in Eagle Pass. There's nothing going on down there. Nothing. Oh, there's yeah, truckers. She filmed it live. Oh. oh no. Oh, truckers! Crossfire wind, <laughs> <with> damn truckers! <laughs> Sorry, I'm just so right. happy that you they brought up idiots. Crossfire Hurricane because yeah, I'm just so happy it came up. That's their new buzzword. <laughs> the it's the new that, buzzword. Can we, we gotta shut that down though. Sorry, Jay. I would have said so. I mean, the 2000 to the 216, um, the whole thing that happened with Trump and the investigation and. I, I think her point was the FBI, which she never came out and said. So Someone's... I just think that I would have loved to stay on more topics of 2024. <coughs> but she but she brings up Crossfire Hurricane all the time. This is this is a thing I sent. And this is what I sent to RTP one time that got completely twisted out of proportion. And I got 
put on blast in her live because I was saying they're talking about Crossfire Hurricane or they're debunking Crossfire Hurricane. What I meant was that they're debunking the or they're they're talking about the the Crossfire Hurricane like conspiracy theory. And when I sent it to Jay, I sent it very fast. I said it very fast, okay? It was so fast. And I said it quickly. It was like Stormy Daniels. It was as quick as that. And I sent it right to him because I was like, holy shit, they're talking about it. I didn't look at what I was writing. I just sent it, okay? And so then I get completely eviscerated by these idiots saying that I didn't know how to read or write or type. And, and you know what? You can F off on that shit because we're doing so well, okay? And that's enough. <laughs> yeah, so well, told I me just, to, I'm, I'm gonna land the plane here, guy. RPT, bro. You, you, like I said, you slay, man. I, like I said, you know, well, every time I hear them talk, I'm just gonna say, you know what? Go, 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 go back to, you know, go back to the space you're in and get slayed again, because you guys have no facts. You guys don't have anything, and, and it, it's it's facts over feelings with these people. They don't care, you know. So, man, you guys Nothing, have a great thing, but. Yeah, I would love to right. see Thanks, a great Truth. debate. I Thank you. Agree with you, man. Jay, and like whoever the best content creator is for the conservatives right now, as I would have thought, Mod would have given him at least a level three or four. No. I didn't realize he was going to be able to play, you know, putt putt golf. No, older, older millennial. Him. That's a scratch golfer. All mm -hmm. she does is is deflect. MJ's pretty good. I mean, MJ. MJ is a good debate. I feel like I feel like MJ would be a good debate. I mean, if you're looking to do another do one. Yeah, I've had a couple of yeah, you you debated you debated MJ. I love the guy. I did. Somebody you did. Told me, somebody told me in the chat to 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 back off the truckers. I am a trucker, and those guys that drove down to that pass were stupid. I mean, let me put that out there. They were just plain stupid, to the point where they actually picked up somebody to go along for the ride showed them where their stash of weapons was and got arrested it was an undercover fbi agent okay they were just flat out freaking stupid they were bored and they were baptizing people in, 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 in baptizing people in horse troughs i mean come on people i laughed so damn hard when i saw that that dude got arrested by an f an undercover fbi agent i i damn near pissed my pants I was like, you dumb sons of bitches <laughs> yeah and I and I warned RTP. I knew because I've debated my several times, and I know when she gets cornered, she flips to agree with you to avoid the L, and she changes what you say and what she said. And I knew that was going to happen several times, and it happened it today. Either, yeah, like, it was either that or she got hit with a fact, and all of a sudden she'd be like, "Oh, why are you attacking me? Why <laughs> why are you defending him? Why are you trying to help him?" Oh, did he say fun. that in his book? Did he say that? It was his direct quote. Did he say that in the book? It was actually his <laughs> book. Shit. That was crazy. That that sequence was nuts. I don't hey, know a lot about real, MOD. Hey, guys, I only quick, saw her once before. Real quick, I don't want to cut anybody off. Um, there's 19 people in the box. I don't usually open up the box. I can... So I, I want people to recycle through. Say what you okay. need to say. I, I'm not trying to push anybody off, but oh, if, you're, yeah, yeah. We can, if you don't we have stuff to go, let's right. rotate the box. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll jump down. I'll, I'll I, jump down. I, I, I just want to know why Unless you, don't want me to you didn't discuss on. the governor candidate from North Carolina. Oh, Cynthia. Oh, my God. I made a video on this page. You want to go look? Oh, my God, what he said. Let's go back to the days of when women couldn't vote. Yes. Vote. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. I'll, I'll say this, and then I'll go ahead and drop RTP. One of the things, like, I didn't know that much about MOD until just, like, believe it or not, a few weeks ago because uh, I, and, and the first time I went into a live she was in, she was just screaming and going crazy. Uh, Priscilla actually said about what you were going to do tonight. That's why I wanted to come over. But what I've learned about her is she likes to play word games. This, this I've learned. She likes to try and play gymnastics with words. So, uh, great live. I'm glad I came over to, to, to watch your debate with her, and it just verified what I pretty much already knew, that, like, she's, like, a fucking idiot. Yep. So, you know. Well, thank you. Thank you. And thank Priscilla. I, I want you guys to know, like, I'm, I don't think Priscilla's mad at me. I'm not mad at her. Like, I, I appreciate her sending people over here. I think we're, we're all good there. So if, if I, she, she messaged in the Discord, I think we're good. I just want to. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll oh, go ahead yeah. and drop down. Thanks for bringing me up here to talk for a little bit thank with you. you. 
it was a great night and everybody in the box is up here y'all have a great night you too, uh, thanks for stopping by trucker i will catch i'm sure i'll catch you around somewhere oh, <laughs> yeah. all you right, right. all right night. thanks again good night good night hey jay real quick um gorilla is in the queue pass <laughs> all right. I know, right? <laughs> That's what I kind of figured. He can be last one up. He can stay in the queue. He's had plenty of time. I wanted to at least ask oh first. Oh, wait, Appreciate I just bought him. You can bob back Austin in. Brian's here. Oh, cool. Well, I'm going well, to say um, great job, RTP. Um, you did a great job. Um, keep it up, well, man. Say, Appreciate thank it. you. I think it's great job, brother. Oh, You're HVAC so is here, too. Oh, oh HVAC's here. here. Oh, Lord. No. I just, I, HVAC you know, goes I, after Gorilla. <laughs> I, just, I, I just want to say really quickly i some of you know i i am a mutual of mod's and i'm in her lives till two three in the morning when she's going through documents with crossfire hurricane and i've oh my god learned a lot about what she's been going through with that and i found it fascinating that it took one name for that entire argument to fall apart because i have been waiting um, I, I, I'm, and listen, I don't go in there and debate her. I try to hear what that side is saying. That's the whole purpose of it is to understand where they're coming from. Cause I feel like it makes you, it makes me want to look at more things and, and investigate more. Um, there's never, you know, it's, it's not a, it's not a debate, but she has been harping on crossfire hurricane for almost two months now. And I, and I've been in there listening to it and I've been fascinated with it. Cause it's something that you don't hear about. You were ready, dude. You were ready. Like, can I ask, were the questions given to you advance or are you just like well informed on that topic? Uh, well, yeah, let's be honest. So the que the topics were decided in advance. Um, Jesse's instructions were to, when there were dead spots to ask a question, but we were gonna have a free flowing conversation. He would step in when like it got off the rails. Uh, he could fact check if he wanted to. We didn't know the questions, we knew the topics um uh, the cro the crossfire hurricane stuff i'll be uh i got a lot of help actually just with sources um mm -hmm. from my mods they they do a good job so it, it was super helpful in researching these exact topics like when you but you had never thought about it before it, like talked about or not crossfire hurricane not before tonight. i don't think i'd ever debated it i don't think but yeah, well, look, the, yeah. It's, it's simple. Crossfire hurricane is very simple. It, uh -huh. it, you go through those congressional hearings and if you cut through the bullshit, the truth is it was kind of <laughs> nothing. But well, people make a big deal out of it. And if it was a big deal, he would have charged people. But he charged three people, two fell off. One was you edited an email. I just I find it interesting that Project 2025 is a conspiracy theory to the conservatives, but Crossfire <laughs> Hurricane and investigating documents like that are deep dives into you know, conspiratorial theories on, on like on the umpteenth degree is not like the justification of that makes zero sense to me. Yeah, no, I agree. I, look, I'm it's just grasping. Curious. It's just, yeah, it's <laughs> grasping at straws. That's what the right has right now. Donald Trump and Donald Trump's entire campaign is just grievances. He has to complain. Everything has to be unfair. He doesn't have real defenses for any of these cases. Like that's the thing that w that we all should be realizing is that he's uh, his defense for almost everything is uh, I can do what I want because I'm president. And th those that are defending him, they don't have facts on their side. He's, I think right. he's in real trouble in Georgia. Oh, yeah. We'll um, hey, Jay. Um, it's Diva. Hey. Um, oh, my God. Great job. I was looking forward to this. I, I told everybody um, Poly Politics Live last night. And then uh, I know Facts Still Matters Live. We were trying to drive everybody over here tonight. And I think everybody was here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Polly was actually yeah. here earlier. Yeah. But oh my, he he's he has COVID. He's really sick. But um, yeah, I know. Um, but I was just gonna say that was the most glorious dog walking. I mean, I have ever witnessed on this app. I mean, it was just perfection. And I literally cleared my schedule. Told my kids I was gonna be busy. Like I was not missing this tonight. <laughs> I just had to see it. Thank and. You. She she stuttered more than Joe Biden did. <laughs> oh. <I'm> oh. <laughs> That's me. Oh. Oh. He was like, it's up, it's up, it's up, it's she could you your points were so perfect. There was just nothing she could say, and she, that's why then she started getting angry. She started yeah. getting angry every single time that you would call her out, or when she said, draw a parallel between you know Trump and Mussolini or Schitler or whatever, and so you draw an exact parallel. And then she's like, 
well am i gonna get a chance to talk because nobody's letting me talk it <laughs> it's like real just to interrupt real quick a lot of people in the comments are asking if somebody recorded it all of my lives if you're new to me i'm live in the morning and it's mostly a news show with felice but we record all of them and we post them on youtube so if you missed it the full replay will be on youtube uh, probably tomorrow at some point it's uh i think it's just at rtp talks I, I believe on youtube but the link the link to my youtube's in the bio but it'll be on there so you anybody well, who missed it, you can rewatch it I already put a video. Oh, I'll be up going to sleep face. to that shit for the next week. Oh, did you do the it. ending? Did you do the ending? Please tell me you did the ending. Yeah, we'll get the I, whole I, thing. I did it. I did it where she's complaining about this not being fair to her. So <laughs> I did that. that. She but... talked so much. She monologued more than it anybody monologue yeah. and then she said she never got to finish a thought and i was just like well man there was many times i thought i hope hopefully jesse's gonna step in and tell her to stop talking well you know <laughs> she, you she know, said a lot <laughs> jay you know the thing is this is i twisted her like a pretzel too but the thing is with me uh at the end before she left she said that i was an old man with a micro penis you didn't get that <laughs> <laughs> I got away easy. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't lying, actually. Um, she always goes no, to the true. principal insults. But, but, but what I what I found kind of funny. Was I found that, out I have thin lips. I'm like, what? Anyway, go oh. ahead. <laughs> what, what, I, what I found funny is this: she's trying to she's trying to argue what's in his book about being a threat with his testimony from the committee saying it was inappropriate. How do you argue? Yeah his own book his own words to the testimony yeah i felt like a threat oh was it appropriate he was being polite there that's all it was and no he was he... talking about mark meadows he was saying what mark meadows asked me that's the part we were missing oh okay. mark, Me mark meadows said so what and, and she didn't read that whole quote on purpose but right. mark meadows at the end of the call said hey is there anything we can do so that our team can get more visibility on these ballots and Raffensperger was asked about that. And they said, was mm -hmm. that inappropriate when they asked for more access? And he's like, no, I didn't really feel that was inappropriate. That's yeah. what, so she's not, she's not referencing what he said about Trump. That was about Mark Meadows and ah, Raffensperger okay. on the same call. But yeah. that's what, that's what he said was he didn't feel it was and, inappropriate. And then what I found, what I found kind of funny is she's trying to get you to qualify. It was it appropriate for Trump to call to see if, uh, to check on election fraud. Well, he wasn't checking on voter fraud. He was checking on, on the issue with him and him alone. He didn't say I was checking for the entire state, make sure it was running correctly. It was for him and him alone. That's all. The 11,780 votes. There's 60,000 underage people. There's 100,000 underlife people. There's 100,000 extra votes. He was checking for him and him alone, not everybody across the board. Yeah. yeah, not any of the Senate seats or any of the other people mm -mm. that actually no. won. He it wasn't was saying him. that theirs was rigged and they shouldn't have won. <laughs> and Fonnie Willis, right. from what I what I remember, eleven RICO cases she's she's won. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I don't remember what the numbers. That that might be right. It was thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, wow. Eleven or thirteen. Real quick, did you to do my mod duties? Is there anybody that would have like a final thought before I cycle people out? <laughs> Yeah, I, oh, uh, I can drop. For, I can drop for it. I just wanted to say that, but I did put a video of her whining, going, "You were treating me fairly." I just, uh. <laughs> but make sure you send. Make sure you send that to me. DM that to me. All right, I will. And right. Shay, mind if I? Uh, second oh, not not one? at all. I'd be. I yeah. I'm okay. just hanging out with everybody, enjoying it. So, but no, you Thanks, can drop Shay. Me, my friend. All right, take care. Oh, all Great good. job, Shay. Bye, Thanks, guys. Shay. Love y'all. So I'll leave. I'll drop two of you one. I just. I had a that. <laughs> you want me to drop I'm myself, or you got me, my friend? I got you. Okay. Bye. I just, um, Bye. this was so well done. And like, I don't, I, the fact that you let her choose the mod too, as, as a moderator, I'm also a mutual of Jesse's. I thought that was a great choice. Um, cause he's an RFK supporter. So he's right in the middle. He doesn't care. Right. Like he's, yeah. he's Democrat. He's RFK. So like, it was a really good choice. I just want to make that clear. Um, please more of this. I need more of this rather than the, nonsense attacking bullshit that we have on this app yeah. like i want more like consistent logical one-on-one -on -one, smaller debates if possible this is a plea from someone who's a watcher just to everybody because this was great this was really great and thank you for having me up and uh yeah thanks Noel. 
I, there's we haven't a whole talked in a while, I feel like. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, well, you're yeah. always busy. It's my fault. No, it's my fault. Yeah. It's I'm actually in my Discord right now. We were live streaming it in my Discord all talking about oh, it. Really? Oh, thank, you. So, thank you. So, yeah. We'll talk soon, though. Thanks for having me out. Yeah, please. Thank right. you. Bye. I'll, I'll be fast. Uh, I just wanted to say, Jay, that was a master class. It was... I don't... I, it's the only word I can think of. Just a master class. Because of you and Felice... I'm more confident when I tell people things and I embarrassed this guy today on Facebook so bad. When I asked for proof, he sent me a Facebook reel. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. That's tough. Uh, and I, and I said that that's your proof. He's like, well, I showed you proof. I showed you proof. I went and it was the yeah. presidential records act. And I went and actually pulled the actual presidential records act and posted it and said, here it is word for word. Tell me where he has, the 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 permission to do everything he says he's allowed to do and he's like, oh i'm done talking to you <laughs> yeah yeah that was a good cho uh, choice by him that's funny <laughs> thank so, you though thank you for the kind words i appreciate it. and and i think felice is still here listening she was here she just messaged me so uh, thanks to her for her as well that was very all kind. right y'all have a good night thanks brother have a good night Tony. that was just, brutal <laughs> just brutal quick, um i had I, two I predictions last I had, I I, hang on, let me finish. Or, or, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, IB. I had two let, predictions. Let, let's, I think, real quick, I think IB just needed an announcement real quick. He's one of the mods. What, what did you need, That's IB? Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm cycling through. That's all. Oh, okay. Cool. Get rid of this back tattoo. Go ahead. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I had two predictions. One was that she was going to straw man almost every argument, and I took a tally. While you guys were debating and I was announcing them uh, uh, in the comments the entire time, she straw manned your argument a total of 12 times. And I think there was only like six topics. <laughs> but the other prediction I had, and I don't mean to sit here and boast that I was right, but it does feel kind of good sometimes, right? Um, the other thing was I knew she was going to freak out and start screaming victim, just like Donald Trump, right? The second they're wrong, it's I'm a victim, I'm a victim, you're not treating me fair. And so, hell of a job, RTP. I think you nailed it. Um, it. I, I'll give her two, two, two points for at the beginning. You did kind of interrupt her a little bit much at the very beginning, and I was like, I "Oh, do. RTP, I do that. you know, right?" But it evened out, and uh, and no, you you really killed it. You did a great job. Appreciate um, that. So Thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, look, I'll you weren't the only one. Days, I, Felice also was like, "Let her talk." I do that. I over talk. I warned Jesse. If you saw our messages, I even said, I was like, Jesse, just so you know, don't be afraid to cut, like tell somebody not to cut each other off. And I was like, I think that's mostly going to be directed at me. And I, I he did it. I, I cut <laughs> people off. I'm aware of that. Just real quick, uh, I caught the last three quarters of that. And man, I'm, I'm kind of ignorant with politics and stuff. And I've been learning a lot by watching y'all debate and stuff. And I really appreciate the, the format of this debate. Um, that way I could get without the bickering and screaming and this and that, you know, and when it gets to be a, a surface, you know, I'm, I really appreciate that. And it really seemed like, you know what you're doing and you pretty much dog walked her. <laughs> um, be careful with the Mountain Dew because if you drink too many of them, you might end up buying a pickup truck that has a MAGA sticker and a pair of truck nuts. <laughs> um, a, a illusion down there, if you have the tattoo of Trump as an island boy with the tattoos all over his face, <laughs> oh, that was, that was classic. Um, hey, but yeah, I right. really appreciate I really appreciate the debate and everything, and uh, I look forward to seeing a lot more. So I appreciate um, that's, it. That's we I'm gonna we land hope to. my plane. Thank you very much. You guys have a good night. Thanks, you too. Thanks, Octane. If you don't mind me piggybacking on that, um, I was actually in her live debating her a couple of days ago, and I was mentioning that I was looking forward to this debate because. Uh, most of the debates, you know, if you jump into Republican live, it's like seven on one, right? And if you jump into a Democrat live, it's like seven on one, right? And it, and it is very hard to be the one, right? And so I was looking forward to this debate because she was going to be just a one on one. She doesn't have her whole crew. You don't have your whole crew. And I'd like to see more of these two where it's not just a pile on because a lot of these come this way. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would, I would, uh, second that motion. Well, thank, thank you. I, I hope we can get, uh, more people to come and do that again. 
uh, however the debate ended, whatever anybody thinks about Maude, like she, it takes courage to one-on-one -on -one debate. Not everybody is willing to do it. Uh, she came to my channel. Uh, she knew that the audience was going to be a little bit stacked against her, and they might not be that kind. So I, I give her credit. I, and look, if you if you're done with the debate and you want to go, go. I, I'm not literal. I'm I'm not going to call her a runner or track star. She's she was done. She was done. That's fine. It's it's no, no. big deal. Like we all exit debates at some point, but. Uh, I hope we do more of this. I, I'm with you. I hope we can do this more. You know, you know what was really telling is kind of near the end, you had this shit eating grin of like, Sorry. you just had it in the bag, like <laughs> the last half. And she had this look of utter defeat, like just struggling. Right. And I was just watching it. I was just like, wow. It's like, you can just see it in their faces, you know? <laughs> oh, she was so angry. So who's up next? I just have like 15 seconds. Is that okay? Go for it, Alicia. That's perfect, yeah. Well, okay, so um, I don't think that debate reductio should really be a part of political debate. I think that's a cheap move, uh, and I'm glad that you thwarted that. I appreciate that that answer with a yes or no, like you're being deposed by an attorney or some shit. I just don't think that's cool. And um, when, that's, when she ended with screaming at you after being factually incorrect, that's how all of mine and her lives and it's me getting screamed out of the room. So I really appreciated you having your, you know, eyes dotted and T's crossed. And I will go emboldened into the uh, unknown and continue to fumble my way through this shit. And I appreciate you. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, thank you. Thanks. And for those in the comments that said you're sorry that you missed it, um, if you go to RTP's YouTube channel, this will be posted um, on his YouTube channel so you can watch the whole thing. Thank yes. you, Diva. SK, uh, Liv, SK's been, been waiting. Uh, oh, SK, SK was yeah, here first. Sorry, I know. Everybody, first of all, everybody be nice to SK. SK is one of Mod's friends. SK is also very kind to me. I like SK. So I don't know what she's going to say, but let's all promise to be kind because she's she's uh, outnumbered severely. Oh, no, I was going to come up here to number one in front of all of your people. Tell you again, thank you for being so kind as to come into my first live last night and with like 10 people. And I was just trying to figure out how to work it. So I really appreciate that. I got that. you banned immediately. Um, yeah. Yeah, Sorry. no, it's OK. I appealed. It was all good. <laughs> um so i appreciate that and i i hope all of your people know that we don't have a problem with each other we we haven't even from day one whenever i came in here unknowingly i didn't even know where i was and stumbled upon your live and came in and ended up in that whole situation i really don't want to talk about again but um <laughs> but <laughs> i did want you to know that um that whole thing uh, that just took place, I can understand how um, unnerving and everything that was because it was even worse when I was up there because the comments were absolutely horrific the whole time I was up there. It wasn't quite as bad with her as it was with me, but the attacks on her children, the, the potato thing. I mean, when I was up there, it was like constant potatoes going up. <laughs> So and that's it's my really fault. hard to concentrate. That one's, that one's my fault. <laughs> well, it's really hard to concentrate whenever people are like, you look down and it's just all potatoes and you're like, I'm really not stupid, I promise. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not dumb. And so then it throws you off. So I get that. I mean, like, that's hard. People were attacking her looks. And then whenever we would be like, hey, don't say that. That's not nice. We were getting muted. I never said a single mean word to anybody. And I was muted several times. I mean, it, it, it was just, I mean there there were no positive comments towards her because they were all getting muted and then all of these well, you know well, rude was about her kids, are you talking though. about tonight are you talking about yeah. tonight or in yours i'm talking yeah, about, no, about I, her kids i actually every time that that got mentioned i took screenshots there were literally three muted accounts the entire live two of those were spam accounts the ones that say see my private video crap those are two of them and then there was one of them some and i will say it was a red hat user as far as their profile but they came in really guns blazing got warned several times and then they got muted i'm not the one who did that one but i did see it happen so those are the only three mutes the entire live 
well my comments weren't showing up like i would comment and hit comment and it was never even showing up well sometimes That's, that the happens. comments were flying by but i was reading through all of them that, I, that I, happened I, to me too by the way there were no mutes yeah i saw a few of mine do the same thing and, and i was obviously on the other side but there was a lot of comments where i'd push it and it would like show for just a like a moment like a split second and then it was gone and i kind of scrolled through and looked for it i'm like oh that's weird it's getting deleted so yeah, that, that happened on. that happened to me i would scroll up and try and find it to make sure it posted and then it wouldn't it wasn't there i, so SK, I, when... I obviously don't I, I would say that SK, as you debate, the best advice I could uh, that I have ever given is never look at the comments when you're debating. Oh, I know. You'll I notice don't. I, look, I don't look at oh, the, the camera. Oh, the comments are cancer. I look away. I can't. But whenever I was on your live, that was my first like debate. Yeah. I mean, I'd, been on, I'd been on panels and mods live before, but never actually debated. Just like you know, said a word here or there or a sentence here or there, not like an actual debate. And um, but I will. You're, I Your live was though, literally just, my first oh. debate. No, it was. I will say this: first. when the comment about her children was was said, uh, obviously I made that announcement. But we have a mod chat in our, and the mods were literally scrolling through comment. All of them, they all took it upon themselves oh. to find the comment, and nobody could find it. So I'm not saying it didn't exist, but the mods were literally scrolling back through comments trying to find it, and they and couldn't. people were so talking I'm, about again. I'm not her saying she didn't see it. Arms. But, People were talking about her having huge arms and how big her arms no. were. Several people yeah. said that. I did not see that comment. I'm just letting I, I, you know happens. that yeah. when Jay has kind of a shorthand, so with the kids, that person would have been blocked if something oh, were absolutely. being said about her children. Jay, like, Jay, like the one that's J-A-Y-Y? -Y. No, I'm sorry. I mean, my name's also no, Jay. GP is Jay. Sorry, you probably didn't know that. I didn't know yeah, that. No, yeah, I was like, wait, name. there's somebody nice in your comments that's Jay that I'm sometimes so comes whenever RTP. I'm on a live, and he's always nice to me. I've never had a problem with him. Hey, SK, real Jay quick. Is also I just, very nice. As one of Looking RTP's first mods, going through the comments, and this is kind of my first time back up here in this box in quite some time. I've been kind of remiss of TikTok as of late, last few months, I've been kind of stepped away from it simply because it was my job to read through those comments. And after months and months of reading through the comments as it being my job, I, I just couldn't do it anymore. I just couldn't. I, I literally started going through TikTok as something to listen to in the background so I didn't have to look at. That's what the yeah. comments will do to you. I yeah. just, I, I gotta they'll say it, They'll fuck it's, you up. Yeah. It will. It will. You know, I mean, some of the things that I've seen said towards people in these comment sections is just abhorred. abhorred. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. And like after I was in RTP's live, that was my first debate, like actual debate, like ever. And um, I was afraid to go on a panel anywhere, even around like even in mods live for two days, I didn't get on a panel because everywhere I went, if I made a comment, there were like 10 or 15 people jumping on me, bringing up stuff from this live when I was in here. It's like they followed me around everywhere I went. And SK, yeah. can I just say one thing? Um, I, I'm one of uh, Jay's first mods as well with IB. Um, yep. And what happens sometimes, there are, sometimes there are certain keywords that if you see your comments don't ever appear, sometimes keywords have been blocked. And so if you have any one of those keywords in your comment, it won't post. Oh, I wasn't posting anything mean. I was trying to tell one person that wasn't nice. Don't say that. And you know what I mean? Like that I'm things like that. I wasn't, but there was there was a lot yeah. of things going wonky and the, the, the comments were going by so incredibly fast. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't um, the case. I, but... Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I was just gonna say I was just gonna I was just telling you that that was another possibility because sometimes if you put a keyword in, that has somebody because mods can block keywords and sometimes they don't even know they're doing it because it pops up so fast. So if it had even one of those keywords, then your whole comment wouldn't show up. Maybe unintentionally. I'm just saying that could have been no, what happened. No, that's all no I'm and I and I understand. I just wanted to come up here and a in front of all your people tell you tell RTP thank you for being so gracious and scrolling into my live accidentally just like I did his and it was my very first one last night there were literally 10 people I was just trying to figure out how to make it work and what to do and how to do it so I appreciate that like a lot um did I ask you how you that. thought MOD did tonight since you're kind of in her camp um I think that she did a great job
job. I think she would have done a whole lot better job had um, had things been a little bit different. Um, and I and I think she was thrown off immediately with the very first thing thrown out there because um, I think that was off the table. And then it so wasn't. I'll clarify that it absolutely wasn't off the table. In fact. Well, she said, do you want to talk about fascism? I said, look, we can talk about it, but there's no way to really prove it. So it may not be good, like as a debate topic, but I, I, I mean, I, I'm happy to show or read the messages from her. That was no, not, no, I don't want, no, I don't yeah. even want to be in the middle of, I don't want to yeah. be in the middle of anything. I just, I, I want to be clear that she's lying. She's lying about that. Here. That's all I'm I saying. actually she's requested earlier. That. I actually requested earlier whenever somebody else was up here because I was about to jump down her throat. Um, after I told you thank you and you know all of that being really nice, I was gonna jump down her throat, but she's not here, so I won't bring it up. But that that's what I came up here for because I was about to. Uh, well, I'm super nice. I'm super super nice, and I don't hold grudges against anybody. I mean, even I mean, I don't hold grudges against anybody. I agree. But. Um, yeah, thanks, Half Pint, for saying I'm annoying. I appreciate that. Don't read the comments. Don't, hold, don't read the I comments. Don't, hold <laughs> don't read them. <laughs> I don't hold grudges at all, but she pissed me off, and I was about to uh, unleash, and I don't do that very often, so it's probably good she left. Okay, well, SK, let's let's just do this now. So at 3.30 today, Maude sent a, a message to I the know, group I don't, chat. I don't, chat. No, oh, no, really well, I'm going to. I'm going to, be. because I'm going to. Okay, you can well, leave I'm going to drop, want. because I okay, really don't want to be. Okay. That's fair. All right. But, yeah, uh, but, but thank And I wanted to just come up here and tell you again, thank you for being so gracious last night. You oh, bet. Shit. No problem. Let's do it again sometime. Yeah. All right. So let me just, for the, for those, that's fair that you want to go for this. That, that makes sense. Um, let's be clear. 3.30 today, my time, uh, we had, we had discussed some topics and Maude messaged the group and said, let's hammer down on these topics. She said, crossfire hurricanes, what we agree on so far. I said, I think we agree on the border. She said, that's two. I said, I'm good with Georgia Rico. And then Maude say, okay, sweet. And if you want fascism, I'm good with that too. I said, that might be enough. I think some leeway in linking to anything else relevant that comes up is good. She said, fair enough. And then we said, if Jesse wants uh -huh. to throw in some curveballs, that could also be fun. She said, we can do that. <laughs> And then we just talked about the backgrounds. Maude is the one who brought up fascism and said, I'm good with it. So it was not a curveball. She said it. And, and, and I was the one actually throughout the whole thing. I was the one that kept saying, I don't know if this is a good topic because like we found out discussing fascism, some people will go with the 14 tenets. Some people go with uh, like the five identifying characteristics. But the one thing that is always true is fascists never say they're fascist. So it's almost impossible to prove, but she pushed it. I, I wouldn't even put that on Jesse. I would not call it a curveball. She said, if you want fascism, I'm good with that. She brought that up because she was trying to run. She brought that up at the end. I agree. Receipts are a stubborn thing. Hey, hey Liv, like I said, we, we want this to be fair. I don't want any conservative out here watching thinking that that wasn't a fair debate because I'll offer the same thing. One, I think Jesse would be a great moderator all the time. He was um, great. I, I would was love so to have fair. Jesse back and do it other times too. I know I'm no mod feels like it was unfair that she got fact checked, but the one thing I did like in my notes is there wasn't a single thing on my notes that I didn't know I could fact check that I had already fact checked. My biggest fear is being on a live and saying something proudly and then having somebody fact check me. It's happened. It sucks. Like I, I do not take that. Well, I'm a very proud person. So in my notes that I brought up, I was 100% sure that the things I said were factual. Well, I, I have to say on RTP. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Hazel. You did a great job. Um, the thing with her is that she reminds me of people that I work in the corporate world who monologue and talk a lot and they think they sound smart and, you know, they just continue to talk and talk and talk. And then, you know, they think that they're like the golden employee and then comes another employee who's smarter and talks, you know, a better. And then all of a sudden that person gets upset that they got, you know, outshone by um, someone hey, else. Um, I'm sorry, guys. My my sound is not working. I can't hear you guys. Sorry to interrupt, but I'll drop down. If you guys can bring me back, I'd appreciate it. 
Perfect. Oh, yeah, I got Thank the you. truth. And the other thing is, um, I felt like I was watching a ice cream cone contest. Like I would, she would be making her ice cream cone, and then you would come and you make your ice cream cone. But you would put sprinkles. You would put like, a, you know, cream on the top, and then you'd put like a cherry on top. So like you would always outdo her. And and I think it's because of the way she is putting her thought process together because she's going around in circles and you're coming in and you're coming in very clean cut. You're lining out the, you know, the, the points that you are trying to make and you go in. And so you were very strategic in your approach where she went around a circle and kind of did like a filibuster and would just talk and talk and talk. And then sometimes she would trip over herself because she would say, I said that, and you would say, no, you didn't say yet. Yes, I did. In her mind, she thought she said it, but because she was just going on and on and on, she thought she said it. And so that added confusion to her. And I think that threw her off. Yeah, those but, are some bizarre moments. I agree. Yeah. That was really, it was really weird to, to have that happen. And it, it, every time the chat was like, because even as sure as I was, I'm like, maybe not, but the chat was overwhelming. And I get that the chat was probably slanted in my favor too, but to have the mod, me and the chat almost overwhelmingly, those were some weird moments. But you were prepared and she was not. Yeah. yeah. But I, what I she was, was prepared. There's no case. That's the thing. Like, this isn't really that I made like such a great case. This, what this should show you is how bad the Trump case actually is. There's no case. He is more fucked than people realize. He, he does not, his defense that he's in the public and even his attorneys are pushing for is, well, he's the president, so he could do it. Like, there's not, there's not a good defense for this. Yeah. Right. And I think that's I want, where it ends. To. It's that they don't have a good defense no matter how much they try to make that you know that uh ice cream cone look really really good there's just at the end of the day there's no way you can make him look good you know and i think at that point they're just like i'm defeated but they will fight all the way to the end you know not to give up right um but i just again thank you for um doing this debate last night. Don't let it get to your head. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I'll do my but best to stay humble. But, but good that's advice. also why that's also why Donald Trump has never said in any of these cases that he's actually innocent. It's just that he has immunity for doing them. It's just not right. allowed to do it. Right. His his yeah his defense hey, is quick, not he's uh, innocent. His Deva, defense can I is, cycle you yeah. out, hon? Of course. Can I just say one thing before I go? Sure. Um, RTP, if she is the mother of dragons, then you are definitely the father of dragons. <laughs> Dad, and, Daddy's uh, here. Daddy He's is dead. home. <laughs> yeah, you can cycle <laughs> me out. Have a good night. Love you Thanks, all. Thanks, Diva. Yeah. All right. Hey, Liv, you've been waiting for an awful long time, brother. Why don't you go ahead and say it real quick? Hey, yeah. What's up, RTP? Hey, what's 